people at the time. Um, it's almost impossible to get something determined to be an overdose death. Now, the reason so you're I, saying, for example, if somebody comes up on them, they got a needle in their arm, they they're dead, right? Foaming out of their mouth. Correct. Sometimes it cannot be classified as a drug overdose. So if an individual has sat there for more than 24 hours, fentanyl has a half life of a uh, little less than that, mm -hmm. um, and uh, actually uh, a lot less than that, about 18 hours. And so by the time someone gets there. Um, and as a as someone passes away, um, uh, the um, the composition of drugs in their system uh, dissipates um, rapidly, um, and uh, without fentanyl in their system or um, heroin in their system, uh, which has a half life that's a little bit longer than fentanyl, but not not that significant, and without a witness there saying, "Hey, I, I you know." put the heroin in the needle for them and I've watched them die, mm -hmm. which no one's going to do. But without that, um, you don't have a true number. So over the last three years, you'll see, um, you know, numbers like 30 or 35 or 40. And in fact, I read in the newspaper uh, not too long ago, uh, my, my wife and I were um, getting our nightly drinks mm -hmm. and uh, we, we see the headlines and uh, just to see if I'm on the, front page because I've sold a lot of papers over the last couple of years yeah and uh, <laughs> uh, and uh, we saw that the, the county was bragging that they were one of uh, very few counties that had um, lower drug drug overdose deaths. didn't I reach out to you on you did the same night you did I immediately so. and yeah. and the thing that is so frustrating about that that this is not a this is not a coroner problem this is not a, a state police problem what this is is um, this is the lack of requirement to be honest with numbers and for a long time the people in uh the city and the county they don't want people to know that there is a a drug problem and they're scared to put it out they there, are right? um so about a year and a half ago one of my very uh, i'm very good friends with uh several police officers in town and and uh, e emts paramedics and firefighters and um we we all um shake our heads when we see those those crazy numbers but when you when you talk to them, um, at the end of 21, we knew the numbers were not correct. Um, so each of, of these guys uh, began keeping a log. And uh, we, we know that number to be significantly higher. And if the people in Frankfurt truly knew what the number was, um, and, and I'm talking, you know, four, five X of what um, is being reported, um, it would be scary. Can you say the number you told me? Um, I will tell you that as of November of 22, for the annual year of 2022, that we knew of over 200 drug overdose deaths. Okay. And, I th and, and I've not seen that anywhere. No, so, so no this and, is, and you this, won't. This is what Frankfurt Today is going to do. Yeah. We're going to bring the real facts out. And, and, and the, the, there's a number of reasons why that is, but I will tell you at a state level, at a federal level, people know that. You want to know why economic development struggles in Frankfurt? Because those companies know those real numbers. Mm -hmm, right. And um, Kentucky, or Franklin County was one of eight counties that was listed as the highest, uh, had the highest um, drug overdose um, per capita in the state of Kentucky, eight out of 120. Mm -hmm. And those eight were part of the first um, um, grant funding that came from the University of Kentucky um, to uh, provide uh, Narcan um, throughout the, um, the entire city. A and it's a, it's a good program for families who want to keep their folks alive, but if they're not going to get the help that they need, there's not enough Narcan in okay. the world. Anybody can get Narcan. They can. Where do they get it at? There's a couple of places. They can, they can actually stop by our office, and we'll actually train them how to use it and, mm -hmm. and things of that nature. They can go to the police station. They can go to the sheriff's department, or they can go to the, um, I believe, the um, hospital, actually. Sheriff's um, office. Provided, oh, sheriff's <laughs> office as well. It, it, it truly, you know, being a former medic, it amazes me how readily available Narcan is now. Yeah. I mean, that was a drug that I'd use maybe once every couple of months. To save somebody. To save to somebody to in, North e yeah, in northeastern Kentucky. Yeah. Um, and if you've ever seen it work, it's amazingly fast. Um, I've seen people, like, near death in, like, a minute suddenly they're talking just like we are it's a, it's a miracle drug it is be, a miracle to, drug to be honest this the sad thing is and eric you you may or may not have 
you know, seen studies of this or even things on online. I know of individuals who have had to have, you know, four, mm-hmm. five, yep. six I've read, I've read those stories. doses. Of, yeah, of yeah. If you, if you have a lot of um, opioids in your system, the one dose will take you off and straighten you up. But if you've got an over, you know, a high, high level of overdose, you're right. You'll go right back into that, uh, all that symptomatic overdose. Just it's uh, it, it's scary because um, you could have, you know, two police officers show up and each of them carry, you know, two packs. You have one person that's overdosed and, you know, four Narcans may not bring them back. And, and I, I don't say that as a, you know, some type of, you know, potential story i know that for a fact that it's happened you know um one of one of we we uh one of the guys who just uh left for uh, better pastures that was a police officer here in town uh david duncan one of my favorite stories about david duncan uh, you know he, how yeah. great david was um was that um he saved this kid down on um downtown down near downtown and when he did he um used his two narcan Yes, is uh, buddy for two Narcan. After two, you can stop. David wasn't going to stop. And when the paramedic walked in, he said, "Give me your Narcan." So on the six one, this girl shot straight up and and lived. And you know, it takes somebody like a David Duncan, who's just not willing to give up on somebody. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, and uh, you know, David was um, David worked the day nine eleven occurred in in New York City, so um, he's been through a lot. But um, the opioid impact is is uh, is scary because it doesn't just affect someone who takes Percocet 30s anymore. We're finding people who are drug testing for THC. Um, it's the only thing I've ever taken is is marijuana. And they're testing positive for fentanyl, and that, and they'll say that's right. impossible. I've only smoked marijuana, and we say, did you roll the joint? Did you watch the person roll yeah. the joint? Do you know who you got it from? Right, Do you exactly. know where they got- yeah, you know, and I was talking about a, that with a friend of mine who does enjoy smoking marijuana, and I said, aren't you scared to death? I mean, unless you plant the seeds yourself and harvest it yourself, it's such a scary time, even for recreational uh, users like that. You know, we all have at least one friend that's probably sure. smoked marijuana their entire life. They function normally. They yep. do well. Uh, there's just not a, a trusted I mean, I don't understand how they find I mean, I guess if I was interested in that, I'd figure it out. But I don't know how you trust a source to get anything. Well, we, we can't even we can't even trust the yeah. items that we're getting at Kroger. I mean, well, things are getting recalled. That's true. In, in $20 daily. bills. Yeah, $20 bills, too. I mean, and, and also never have your money examined, right? Because every everything um, is tainted. It's got drug residue on it. It does, but the scary part about that is it takes the the tip of a pen yep. in fentanyl. And carafentanil is like 20 times less than that. And that's yeah. starting to make, carafentanil is an uh, uh, elephant tranquilizer. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Just a, and it, it's tiny. I, I don't, you know, and this is one of those things, you know, talking to that same friend, they talk about how much stronger marijuana has gotten, you know, oh, over yeah. the years and how, how much more, th- how much higher levels of THC and all that, and then you think about fentanyl. Who wants to make something that strong? China, it's, yeah, China. China. I mean, it's the, it, it's the ultimate war, right. right? I mean, you if if you're able to take out the hundred seven thousand Americans year that are reported that are reported, correct? And a majority of those are what age? Military age. Military yeah, age, right? 18, Eighteen to 30. so if you can take out a hundred thousand um, reported military age individuals. And Isn't, ruin countless other lives. Oh, and, and just destroy lives. Because yeah. with with each one of those, um, you have decades of trouble after that. We have um, we have multiple families that we deal with that have lost multiple family members mm-hmm. to um, drug overdoses. It hit my then, family. Hit my it, family. It hit everybody's family. It, hit, it, it really it, has. It, it's what we talk about you know, in, in church and in, in the Bible is generational curses. Right. I mean, you can have one guy that, you know, just impacts you know generations or one female i mean you know guy right. you know either one um i you know i forgot something okay and, and i'm i need to segue off of this for a minute 
Oh, this is kind of scary. I don't know. Is he reaching? Well, out? your rider. I did. I did have a. I did have a rider. Yeah, you sent something out requesting some. Yes. Some Hollywood type things. Some, some, some. Here we go. This is what I'm talking about right here. Put him on camera, Eric. Got, got him a pack of or uh, about two pounds of it, about two pounds of M and M's. Uh, and green, green M and M's. Specified so green. If M&Ms. you go back and and look at the threads, you'll see you'll see that that specific request. Long story. I had my my people reach out to his people, and we left Which a voicemail with his people, but his people never returned uh, the phone call. Uh, so I just had to wing it. If it's but what not did, right. But what did when you called that number? What did it say? Did you call it, Eric, or did our people call it? Our, our, our people, which oh, okay. was me okay. for that time, <laughs> right. called. Okay. Uh, but no, I did not get the, the voicemail that you had on oh, there for me before. Okay. He had one that said, I would actually sent him a TikTok. Um, I can't remember what it basically, said. No. basically said, uh, you've called the person with the world record and not returning phone calls. Yeah. Why don't you try try, try text. texting instead? Yeah. yeah. Um, but you, anyway. You know, one of the, uh, one of the interesting uh, histories of... Uh, uh, riders with regard to concerts and things of that nature is uh, they will, some of the biggest bands in the world will uh, provide very odd requests. And the Clean reason them. being is yeah. if you can't get, you know, the green M&Ms right, you're not going to get the sound right. Mm-hmm. right. And so they, they refuse to play at places like that. Aerosmith was one of them. Yeah, I've heard it. They'll put in some, like, ridiculous request that, yep. like, not complicated no. just to make sure – you know, like a lawyer, make sure that you read top to bottom, word for word, what was requested. And heaven well, help us. If Cal, go the, how um, Capital Court Authority led into Courage Couture. Okay, uh, so, uh, yeah, it's an interesting story. Um, I'm wearing this hat today. Yeah, the hat you were wearing is a, a Courage Couture hat. And, uh, Eric, you, we gave you I, one right before. I, I don't, don't have mine on, but it's Faith Over Fear. Um, Courage Couture is a new clothing brand that uh, we launched on July 1st uh, as a soft launch, and we will... Um, uh, we will actually have um, ambassadors um, and brand ambassadors that will uh, take a, off with us on August the 1st. The, the idea behind Courage Couture is that every single person we see in, in our lives, um, and I had to learn this. I mean, I, I'll, I'll be honest. I, I, lived a, I lived a charmed existence growing up. I, I, I grew up in um, a middle income, uh, everybody that I knew, you know, went to church or, you know, played athletics, stayed out of trouble. Um, and I had to learn that um, there were a lot of folks that were going through a lot of things. In fact, what I learned was every single person you come across on the street is dealing with something. And if you don't believe that, just ask them. Yeah, don't slam somebody because everybody's got a problem. Everybody's got something going on in their life, whether it's a health every issue or a family member leader. or it's a um, you know, Slam something Never, with a, an problem. addiction or a, a crisis in faith, mm-hmm. something. and uh, Or if they don't have it, they have it going on in their family or to someone that they love. And uh, over the last um, 10 years, but more specifically over the last four years, there is a, there is a uh, July 2019 Kyle and there's a September 2019 Kyle. And I like to try to, to, try to be a lot more September 2019 Kyle. And um, I had a I had a I had a crisis of faith myself, and because of that, um, I had to come to the realization that um, everyone around me um, was dealing with something. And so um, the idea of Courage Couture has always been in the back of our mind, in the sense that um, we we deal with life and death situations in my office, and and most of the folks that work with me are. Um, well, everyone that works for me is, is this is their mission in life. This is, they realize they could probably, mm-hmm. um, you know, uh, go work for the state and make more money um, and sit in a cubicle and maybe not be as fulfilled. Uh, nobody that works for me feels that they have um, the hardest job in the world, even though it is a hard job. Um, but because we live in these, these times that we live in, and because we live in a time when we know that everyone is struggling with something, we wanted to provide a clothing brand that at a minimum could make the person who's wearing it feel good with a positive message and also um, allow the people who see the, the positive message um, feel better. Uh, one of our, one of our uh, shirts. I was uh, say, I think yeah. you want to mention one I was. Yeah, I was one, of the sh- one of the shirts simply says, you know, the world is, is a better place because you're in it. 
you know, and right, and that that was a really neat one, and that was one of my favorites. I like that because it wasn't about the person mm-hmm. wearing it; no. it was about passing. Just because you you know we talk about people in struggle and people who who are going through things. There are a lot of people out there that are just one kind word from you walking no, off the edge. You have no idea. We have more people that come into our office, and we don't recognize them, and they say, you, you don't recognize me, do you? And we'll say no, and then they tell us who oh, they are, yeah. and we're like, what happened? I mean, you look amazing. And more people tell us, you all treated me like a human being, more so than anybody else throughout my process. You all were kind to me, and you all smiled mm-hmm. at me. You didn't treat me like a criminal. You didn't treat me like an addict. And that's not a Kyle Thompson thing. And, and my staff will tell you, I, I don't take any credit um, at all when uh, someone decides to get clean. That's a God thing. And I give all the credit to, to God and to my staff. Um, you know, my staff and even the people who sit in, in, in the office who are, who are drug testing, when uh, my staff will come up to them and say, hey, you need to, uh, you, are you ready yet to go in to, to rehab? And we don't get paid a dime for helping somebody get into rehab. And um, they'll say, uh, I'll think about it. I'll do that. And we'll hear somebody that's in the other room say, you're about to get talking to by Kyle. When Mr. <laughs> Kyle gets here, you're going to get talking to. And uh, sometimes they do. Sometimes they don't. Sometimes they just listen. But there's been plenty of times where Jen sent me a text and said, you know, where are you? You know, we're, we're eating dinner. And I'll say, you know, Greg and I, Brandon and I, we're all down here. We're, you know, we're trying to help somebody get through a hard hard time. And sometimes that's that's rehab. And sometimes it's just listening. And, uh, and you don't know. Um, how close people are right and it's people that um these are not um people that you would consider you know less than these are these are soccer moms these are people who live good lives these are people who all of a sudden you know had a death in the family or got a tax bill or you know uh got a dui for the first time in their life and they think their life is over right and uh it can spiral quickly or um you can get your life together and move forward. So. Right, because somebody, you know, in, in most cases, somebody at some point made the decision to turn to drugs, and, and you don't know where they started, where they were at, because you're right. It could be that soccer mom. It could have been, you know, that nice guy that you, you know, went to school with. Yeah, absolutely. He was a re- reputable guy, and suddenly he had, is that a bad day? And, you know, I always... I always try to smile and be friendly with people when I'm, you know, when I'm out in public because you just never know. Sometimes that smile from a complete stranger can completely shift somebody's life around. Well, and and one of the great things about Frankfurt has always been, and I I'm going to brag on my hometown here, is that normally people are very kind. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, uh, the mayor and I were downtown uh, yesterday, and we're shocked. We're amazed the number of people who are walking through downtown right now who are just visiting our town we haven't even gotten started yet on what, what we're well I, I shouldn't say that we ha- you haven't even seen what's about to happen and people are already showing up but they are so kind they want to know you know everything about our little town they you know and people you know Kentucky and southerners we're all very kind people but we also have those moments where you know someone hits us with the back of the shopping cart while we're walking through Kroger, right? <laughs> and uh, they're having a bad day, too. And uh, we all have bad days. The one thing that we don't realize is that your bad day can can make someone's life, you know, a living hell. And right. so um, uh, my goal with Courage Couture was to take the energy and spirit and the mission that we have at our company uh, and put it in a clothing line that young people and old folks, like, yourself like, like myself i should say um you can call you know, me old you know, old too you can call um, me old um but that we can all wear and we can all be proud to wear it you know the the stuff that kids wear these days the stuff that kids you know just wreck their minds with mm. just wear something that has a good message on it you know right. i mean it, it it's not it's, it's not just, rocket science well right it's just passive positivity it's, a, it's all it is well you it's mentioned the mayor a second ago yeah which leads us into our next topic uh we might get a change in the form of government that the city runs a, from a city manager to a strong mayor form of government. Can you talk about that a little bit? Yeah, I, th- I think it's important to understand that um, the first thing that people always bring up when they talk about um, 
the city of Frankfurt and the city commission is that um, we have um, a revolving door of city managers. 12 in the last 17 12 years. 12 in the last 17 years. Um, I will say, though, that, you know, that's not incredibly uncommon. Um, nationwide, um, I, I, you, you know me, Craig, over the 40, of the 4,500 uh, cities that have city managers across the country, um, the average time frame is um, about one year and 11 months. Because they're always looking to go to a bigger city. Always going to a bigger city, or um, you have individuals who come in and, and don't know how a city manager form of government is supposed to work. Um, they have an idea how that's supposed to work, um, but they don't realize and, and they don't read the statute well enough to know that the commission is still the legislative authority um, and the executive authority of the city, yeah, whichever I, city that I, may I, be. I did some research in the State Journal today, and I noticed that we've had maybe recently quite a few that have uh, been terminated. And we've had some resign, go on to other jobs, but um, it always seems like there's a contention between the city manager and the city commission on who's really running things. It's it's interesting that that um, that that's how it is. It's also interesting that most of the people who come in the city manager role um, come into that role the first time they're ever a city manager in Frank in a, a small in town, a small right? town. Yeah, and so they've never had to be in that position before, and so they you know. They're told they're the executive of the city, which they are. That doesn't mean you have the executive authority of Correct. the city. Um, you are given, you know, all of the powers and authorities that the that the commission gives you. Um, I, I think one of the one of the things that we struggle with in, in um, with regard to that is, you know, who makes final decisions on things. And um, for many many years, um, I will say for the last sixty years, um, the um, city, the city did not get to where it is right now, and city government did not get to where it is right now overnight. It took a long slide to get here, um, and it took uh, weak leadership. Um, and I'm not talking about any recent uh, commissions. Uh, I respect everybody that has been on the commission in the last 20 years. Uh, I'm talking specifically about um, allowing um, a degradation of um, the executive authority of the commission. And what happens is there's a lot of confusion, you know. Um, in fact, there's so much confusion that um, the, our previous um, city manager essentially told, and, and other executives told city employees, you cannot go talk to the city commission about an right. HR issue or a, an issue within your department or, or anything of that nature, which, you know, that, that would be like saying you can't go talk to your congressman, you know, uh, if you have a, a problem. Um, with your uh, local area, you know, we are the elected officials. We are the, the for people. For everybody who, for, in the city. For everyone in the city. And that doesn't mean that right now, as it stands, you know, just because I live in Arnold Ridge, that means I represent people, you know, over on the west side of town too, uh, in downtown as well. But um, there's only 19 cities in, in the um, state of Kentucky that um, have city manager forms of government. And there, those 19, even though some of them are large, those 19, there are a whole bunch you would love to move yeah. in the city manager. Well, form. describe what um, what would a strong mayor form of government look like as a entity within the community, who's representing who, how they're represented, and all that kind. Of. How yeah? How do they? How does a strong mayor differ versus a a, a city manager? It's a good question, and, and the answer is uh, fundamentally the um, mayor becomes the executive of the city. Uh, imagine um, from a federal level and a, and a state level, the governor and the, uh, the president, right? Um, but the commission itself, again, has that legislative authority, okay? They can only ma they're the only ones who can make and uh, stop legislation, um, ordinances, uh, laws within the city. Because of that, um, even though you'll have a strong mayor form of government, which means that when you call the mayor's office now at City Hall, um, you may get um, someone who is elected as the mayor. They'll have certain authorities, just like the city manager did, to handle the day-to-day -day affairs. But when it comes to um, issues related to um, 
the fundamental strategic plan of the uh, of the city, um, the growth of the city, the economic development of the city, all of those things um, will be directed still by the city commission. Now, the interesting thing about this is that if you go to a strong mayor form of government, um, you have to have a minimum number of individuals on the city commission. Um, and that number is six. You have to have six members. We only have four right now. So that would that changes things fundamentally. Um, the other thing that um, we have to do in Frankfurt that is long overdue is that we need to uh, change us to a truly representative uh, democracy and city in this a representative uh, government for the city. Meaning not having all the power concentrated in one area. Not having all the power concentrated in one area, but also, uh, you know, I'm happy to take a call from somebody on the west side, but it's much better if I represent my geographic location where I mm -hmm. live. You know, our magistrates do that. Uh, um, our legislators do that. But yet our city, we all represent everybody there. Um, in, in the community, and I love my community, but um, we have a power struggle when it comes to um, certain uh, dynamics throughout the city where some areas have been over-represented um, for years and years. So to go along with this, we need to change uh, the form of government that we have to a uh, representative form of government, which would mean that we'd have to change to wards or districts. Um, the proposal that I have made, and um, just so you understand what the process is, to be able to get onto the November ballot of 2023, we have to have the um, the actual resolution or the, um, if somebody's going to do a petition, it has to be turned into Jeff Hancock and it has to be published by uh, the August. Pe the by petition you're talking about. Petition or the resolution. Okay. It has to be filed by August the 8th. So as you know, we're... This is uh, less than a month, month away. away. Right. Um, so the resolution is written. I wrote, I wrote the resolution a month ago um, and provided it to the city. What we, what we didn't know at the time was we can't put the wards on until um, we have 240 days before the next election, okay? Next general election. So sometime in uh, March or April, we could put the wards issue on the, uh, the ballot. However, if that's the goal that we want to move to that, then it requires us to go ahead at the time that we change government, which would, if we decide to change in November of 2013, that by the Wednesday following... No, 20, what's the year again? 2023. Okay. So if, if, we, if we have a referendum... In November of 2023, the Wednesday following the Monday of the election, we are required to have um, all of the representatives, um, at least those seats, available. And then we would have to have a special election for mm -hmm. those additional seats. Now, my proposal has been to have six wards um, that would have approximately 3,200 votes, potential voters in each uh, ward, um, and then to have two um, at-large individuals for a total of eight. Explain the at-large members. Then. So the at-large members would be just like we have now, essentially, where you're running citywide. Um, essentially, if you have two strong candidates from a one area, you, you may have that one candidate that you think, well, he could run very well citywide, so he decides he wants to run there. However, to be considered the mayor pro tem, um, and under the statute, um, the way that it reads, the mayor pro tem would be the person who would have the most votes um, as the at-large. Right, as a uh, citywide Citywide election. Correct. Um, so you would have eight individuals you're voting. First thing people would say is, how are you ever going to get anything passed? You have eight people. You're always going to have a tie. Well, the mayor does have a vote if there's a tie. So that's when that would come into play. So then you say, well, who would want to be mayor in a situation like that? Well, you're taking away the executive authority from a city manager that is making let's say $150,000. Mm -hmm. um, the mayor then, their uh, pay, which right now is nothing is minimal. Um, yeah. Um, Bump up to one hundred fifty. Would be up to $100,000. So most people out there wouldn't work for what the mayor no. makes. No. Not now. No, yeah, no. not now. Um, and, and you would have a significant number of individuals who are qualified um, who would probably run for that position. 
um, it's also still going to be nonpartisan. So um, the goal is, w when it comes to uh, city politics, to always keep it that way. Um, and I, I think that's important in a city like Frankfurt that is um, a hybrid of a lot of different uh, political, religious, um, socioeconomics. I think it's important that you keep it that way. But it's also not, we can't have a dressed up beauty pageant either. We need to elect the people who are qualified for those positions. And I think you will have a number of people who would um, put their names in, in the hat, if you will, um, to run for that. Now, I, I think uh, it's likely that um, Mayor Wilkerson would, would probably run for that position. And this is, and I want to make it very clear that um, the, the entire idea of changing from uh, a city manager form of government to a strong mayor form of government has been a discussion for many, many years. But it was proposed by myself. It was backed by um, Commissioner Waldridge. And the mayor, while he supports it, this was not the mayor's idea. And, and one of the things I, I don't want anyone to think is, oh, this is just an opportunity where Mayor Wilkerson just wants to make more money and he's going to do that. But mayor Wilkerson um, has a very successful business. And, and so um, if he decides to run, um, he would have to give up, you know, at least a portion of that very successful business. And these discussions, these discussions went on. And, you know, the behind-the-scenes discussions talk about without uh, bringing the mayor in. Oh, 100%. Ground, ground level discussions. Yeah. 100%. And, and the other thing we have to make sure that we say is that we, did, we never had um, a role in quorum. It was, it was a situation where... Citizens it, talking to citizens our elected talk, officials. To talking to the elected officials saying, you know, the city manager thing is not working. What, what is it we can do to make it work? Um, and... And I don't necessarily think it's the city. We've had all sorts of different city commissions mm -hmm. over the last 20 years. If you think of the makeup of the city commission from um, the Laysons to the Roaches to the uh, Mays, you know, to the Tippets, you know, to the Waldridges and the Thompsons, there's been a whole wide range of different people on there. Correct. And, and we've yeah. all had issues with the, that form of government. It, it provides a, a level of power that does not want to have a level of responsibility and i've and talked to authority. some of the ones you mentioned and they're in favor of the strong mayor form of government and uh you know so with that you know your budgetary constraints that you have and uh money issues like always and i think there's some good news to report on the city budget where we were at a four million we were looking at a four million dollar deficit so w when I was elected the first time in 2020, um, and we had our first budget talks, and our first budget talks were in May and June of uh, 2021, they came to us and essentially said, oh, by the way, or you have to remember we're at the very end of COVID here, right? And all of state government is at home, okay? And they said to us, we are looking into the future right now, and we believe we will have a $4.5 million deficit. When you hear you're going to have a four and a half million dollar deficit in two years, um, you are you are genuinely concerned about. Turn the sound off. You are oh. genuinely concerned about the um, uh, viability of the city. What's going right. to happen, right? I, yeah, I didn't know what, where were you going to find that money to to make up the difference. So well, and, and yeah. didn't a lot of that come from? And I don't think a lot of viewers may or may not know this, but state government. Once they started working everybody two to three days a week at their home, their HR taxed them differently. And they said, you're no longer Correct. in the city. From your location. Because Michelle, when she works from home, when she worked from home three days a week, there was three days she didn't pay city taxes and it paid her money, which takes it out of your pocket. 100%. In fact, what happens was, you know, a, a good chunk of our funds to our general fund comes from our occupational tax. And, and anybody who lives in Frankfurt knows that you know, between 7.30 and 5 o'clock, our population doubles because of state government. It does. It, or and it used and to. that's a lot of dollars yeah. that come into yeah. the community. It used to. And the other thing that people don't realize is that all those big state buildings out there, they don't, play, they don't pay real property taxes mm -hmm. on any of that, um, thanks to the Carroll administration and other laws that went into effect in the 70s. But um, so when everyone went home, and most of those people, a lot of those people live in, places like Anderson County where there's mm -hmm. no occupational tax, or even if they were in Shelbyville where there is an occupational tax, that money but goes to Shelbyville, yeah, and not our, to our us. Yeah, and our occupational tax is 1.95%. 1.95%. Correct. 
Yep. And if, if they go to Anderson County at zero, they got a raise. That's exactly right. And so wouldn't you wouldn't you fight coming back to work right. five days saying. a week? Yeah. Right. Um, so um, that was that was all projections. The other thing was we had a number of capital projects that were coming up that had to be um, had to be taken care of. We were to, we were told you know these have to be done. These these have to be done. And luckily, um, we have a group of individuals who are on the city commission um, who over that two and a half year period we really buckled down on on the spending that we were doing but also the forward thinking when it came to spending as well and so we had essentially um, gotten that number down from four and a half um, through our budget discussions um, and our budget just went into effect you know nine days ago yeah um, to around half a million dollars was the deficit and that was that was truly cut 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 for two years um you know police need 10 vehicles we we gotta we're gonna give you four you know we we need new laptops okay we're we're gonna we're gonna buy refurbished right now you know things of that nature um and it's not a good place to be in but as a steward of the the taxpayers dollars i can't very well um say um, we're gonna go to all electric vehicles you know in the city of frankfurt um, because number one, that's that's not um, prudent. But at the same time, you know, it could be twenty five, thirty thousand dollars more per vehicle. So that that's something that that made a big impact. Um, and then, uh, surprisingly, um, in June, um, I got a phone call one afternoon. I got a text message one afternoon from uh, the city manager at the time, and all it said was um, it was about one thirty in the afternoon, and uh, it was about one fifteen. And she said, um, I need you at the rotunda at 2 o'clock. Well, I mean, I've never been called to the rotunda, but I assumed right. it was something big, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, th- <laughs> I didn't ask them any questions, but they just said, they're going to present us with a check, and we don't know what it's for. And So, so y'all truly didn't know? We, we had, none of us had any idea what it was. But, but let me put a pin in that right there. What you have to understand is when I said earlier that the city does not or the state does not pay uh, real property taxes, um, they do pay something called a payment in lieu of taxes or the pilot is what it is. And it's statutory. And believe it or not, there was a statute passed in the 70s that said under Governor Carroll, under Governor Carroll, that said, um, we understand we don't we don't pay the city of Frankfurt um, anything for r- real property taxes. Um, and real property taxes is what, is what provides the services. So mm-hmm. thank goodness nothing happened down at the transportation cabinet a few weeks ago. But but when every police officer and every fire department shows up over there, that's a lot of resources, right? It is. And every person that comes from out of town, they have to have those resources for them. And I don't know what the percentage is, but if you look at the the percentage of property inside of just Frankfurt City, the city of Frankfurt – I mean, it's a high percentage of property that's utilized by state government or owned by state government. It's about a quarter. Yeah, and of the real property value. Right. So that that takes a huge chunk of money away. It does, and especially knowing that you know it's not just the it's not just the money that we have, but it's also the fact that our resources are used twice mm-hmm. as much. Your water, the electricity, and all we, those things. And we had to build our fire department up to that's take correct. care of the state buildings. That's correct. That we're not getting cost. tax dollars at our cost. At our cost. So um, it, it went up. It, so in 1975, they created uh, the first payment, and the payment was to buy a fire truck for the city of Frankfurt. It was $150,000. And it, it went up uh, one, twice, and it had gone up to $195,000. So if you take what the city should pay annually, um, it's about – one and a half to two million dollars a year in real property taxes. What the state should pay. What the state should pay. Yeah. And we we were receiving one hundred ninety five thousand, so about ten percent of what we should be receiving. Um, and we had been lobbying from day one of of coming into the office in in uh, January of two thousand twenty one that 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 should be the first thing that we go after. I mean that's that seems logical, you right. know, and um with the leadership that we have um, now in the Senate and the House, um, and I give big props to Senator Jay Williams and uh, Representative Derek Graham, who, who worked together with uh, the budget and the governor's office, 
um, they presented us with, um, you know, about a $700,000 increase in that. And that will continue, but that forever for uh, forever yeah. it will it, they so will it's almost 900,000 a year now versus 195 it is and it's interesting that the 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 statute specifically says that annually the state will negotiate with the city of Frankfurt there has never been a negotiation right. with the city of Frankfurt so when we brought this up to them they were happy to discuss it um, and we we had no idea uh, that there had been a decision made and um Big props to Governor Bashir. Uh, he and I played soccer and basketball together when we were kids. Believe it or not, we're the same age. I know he looks a lot younger than me. Um, I wear cooler clothes. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. But uh, <laughs> but Governor Bashir, uh, being someone who had lived in Frankfurt as a kid and then moved his family to Frankfurt, which is so important for this city, um, realized the needs of Frankfurt. And we received, uh, as a city and and the entities for our city, a lot of those being uh, nonprofits, we received two point seven million dollars that day, and that's the biggest gift, um, the largest amount of, of payments to the city of Frankfurt in a, g- a generation. Mm-hmm. Um, and um, because of that, though that amount that was increased, we actually um, went to a balanced budget, and and it was luck, but we had worked from a four and a half million. And 21 down to a half a million and we were rewarded at the end and it was uh we, we were very lucky we would have made it work um whether we had to take from rainy day funds or whatever we needed yeah, to but i was getting ready to ask rainy day funds are 18 uh, 18 million, million right yeah. yeah and uh what's required by statute we actually are, are a little too high right Correct. now we, we should be at about 13 13 and a half million right. And if we don't lower that soon, um, it could affect our bond rating. Right. And um, people say, well, that doesn't make sense. You should be able to save as much money as you want. It, that's not how it works. Um, you need to you need to lower your cash reserves at a certain point. Um, it doesn't, doesn't do the citizens any good to it, be sitting on $5 million. No, it when sure doesn't. There's so many needs throughout the city. It sure right. doesn't. And, uh, and for years, you know, they call that the rainy day fund. But the reality of that is that's just money sitting in a bank somewhere. Now... What we never did until this year, and I'll give huge props to um, Alicia Boyd and those in the finance department. We have a, a finance committee. They decided, hey, we're gonna we're gonna start investing some of these funds and, mm-hmm. and actually trying to um, so that it's not sitting in a checking account, if you will, drawing you know, 0.5 percent. Yeah. We're, we're actually gonna we're actually gonna uh, invest the money in, in safe investments. I know there's no Rolling such thing CDs as that. CDs or something. Yeah, isn't? and so um, essentially having our money work for us as well. And that's the first part of a number of issues to get Frankfurt on a on a better path. But um, I'm looking forward to the day that we're not worried about you know meeting budget. It's like crap. We have ec- what are we going to do with all this extra money? And I, it, that day is coming. As long very as soon. elected officials can constrain themselves to not spend every nickel in the pot. That's I, I, I would that's venture to guess to that most people listening are, are not going to think that that uh, elected officials will. Restrain spending. Restrain spending and, and be confused or, or no. not have a way to spend it. No, I think I, th- I think that's fair. I think I, I think there is a lower taxes. I think everybody listening think, would agree I with. Think, I think, but, I but agree you got to have other that. things like uh, home street repair. You know, a fella did a video uh, driving down home street about knock the fillings out of his teeth. I was going to say I, I don't even have fillings. I feel like I'm losing yeah, every time and I go down. If you've ever driven down there, it's rough as a cob. It's worse than some dirt roads. It is. It really is. And, and, and that didn't happen overnight either. Right. And you know, and I, um, I got a few comments on that. Uh, some from a few engineers, mm-hmm. uh, one in particular a friend of mine I worked with for 30 years and, uh, saying a project is in the works, but it hadn't been, made public that's correct you know, that, so that lets people complain because there's plans in the pipeline but nobody said there's plans in the pipeline right. which would hinder why why is it not more open when we know there's problems and there's solutions in the pipeline why doesn't our elected officials say hey we're being proactive we're telling you that there's something on home street it might be two years before we get to it but it's, it was yeah, saved a why lot is there not planning. more transparency in that is there so so there's a couple of reasons why, and, and let me give you the simplest reason why. If uh, if the state of Kentucky came out and said, by the way, um, 
Home Street in that area in particular, um, which is about a 40-yard area, 50-yard area uh, of space, that is a state That's highway. That's a little bit longer than that. It is, but but that the main issues with the where the sinking and dipping and things. Mm-hmm. It's like right uh, at the corner on down to the yep. traffic. About two tenths of a yeah. mile, if I measured it correctly. It's uh, if everyone, uh, if we came in and said, um, the state of Kentucky, which that is a state road, um, the state of Kentucky is going to um, widen. And, th- and let me disclaim this. This is not what the state of Kentucky has said. But if they were to come in and they were to say, um, we're going to widen X road and we are going to um, also uh, extend that out um, to be a main thoroughfare entryway into the city of Frankfurt, which, by the way, it is. Technically, it, it is. It, it yeah. really is. Um, what what happens to the to the value of the property around there at that time? Well, if you widen the road, what happens to the homes that are on the road that are 12 feet off the road? Well, they're, those are those become extremely valuable because you have to buy that property mm-hmm. if you're the state, and so people would begin to uh, purchase those things. Yeah. And so that's why every time you hear us go into a closed session to discuss the purchase of real estate or the potential pur- right. purchase of real estate, that's why we're doing it. It's not because we're trying to be super secretive. It's because if it got out that we're looking at, you know, I'll use my building, 100 East Main, um, then. People would all go. Well, I'm going to go buy 100 East Main. I'm going to go overpay for exactly. And you, so you're artificially in, inflating values. Exactly. Because they see a bigger payday down the road. Right. And 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 people have done that in the past to the city. I mean, even as as you know, in the last year, the city has overpaid for property um, because individuals have overpaid to buy Second the property street. to begin with Second on street. Second Street. Yeah. Um, so you're not necessarily neglecting Home Street or not trying to address it or or. or Whatever, but sometimes you just can't because it has a impact bigger than you're even allowed to tell the citizens. To, to some extent, yes. And I will, I will say this though: um, we have been in discussions, and I say we. Chuck Knowles, who does an amazing job for the city, yes, um, he does. He is. Uh, he has been in constant contact, as has uh, Mayor Wilkerson, myself, uh, Penny Peevler. I, I can't even begin to talk about all the things that Penny Peevler does for us. She's amazing. All of us have have talk directly to Jim Gray and his uh, Secretary Gray in his yeah, office. Jim Gray, Secretary of Transportation. And, and, and we have talked directly with them and said, we don't care what you do. We don't care if you put pillows down there. Do something, mm-hmm. right? Because we're getting hammered, you know, because right. all they know is the city of Frankfurt's not doing something to fix a road that is yours. Um, and so... And it's been messed up for a long... It has. Because mm-hmm. I worked on, I worked right off of Home Street when it flooded regularly, and they got that right. repaired. right. Well, I think it's important to mention when you talk about going into executive session uh, because I see a lot of people get frustrated, and sometimes I'm one of them. It's like they just started the meeting. Now they're in executive session. So, you know, then you go into executive session for an hour, and then you're out for 10 minutes, and you dismiss. And I think it's important for people to understand that you're not doing that because you're hiding anything or you're not being transparent per se, but there are just some things you can't make public. There are some things we can't make public. Because um, there could be a, a, a negative, you know, a bigger picture negative impact. There, there could, uh, and uh, I'll give you a couple of examples. We can't talk about litigation uh, or potential litigation uh, in, um, when we are dealing with uh, um, things that are in the public sphere. We can't talk about um, acquisition of property. Um, we, we can't talk about um, personnel uh, matters. Um, that uh, may lead to litigation. Um, and each of those uh, matters um, are important to us. Um, and we want to make sure we get them right. Now, there are some uh, closed sessions that are 10 minutes long. And then there are some that are an hour long. Sometimes, or longer. Or, or longer. longer. Or longer. <laughs> I think the last one was, was about an hour and 10 minutes. And we had decided what we were doing about two minutes into it. But um, you know, you'll have people that want to to say their piece, and that's fine. That's that's mm-hmm. what they're that's what everyone's supposed to do. But you know, when it when it comes right down to it, um, we are tr- we are trying to be the most transparent government that uh, Frankfurt has ever had, and to do that, we have to um, genuinely be careful of the things we do say and don't say. Um, but I can tell you, um, there there are a lot of things that I can talk about tonight. It's a whole bunch of stuff that I can't talk about 
it's going to blow your mind. Um, it, yeah, because I've heard that before, that there's all kinds of stuff in the pipeline, but nobody will ever tell me what's in the pipeline to... Uh, I like to keep you guessing. Yeah. Keep you guessing. Do well, and I, know, and, I, and I know that people probably think, ah, oh, baloney. You guys don't have anything going on. Y'all haven't done anything. You haven't seen anything. Well, <coughs> you know, Rome and Frankfurt were not built in a day. It also did not take, you know, one w- one year for this us to yeah, get to the point where we, we're at. We, I think most people would just want to... I'm always saying hashtag small victories on different oh, yeah. things. And right. people want to see more of the small victories. I agree. Because the small victories lead to bigger victories. And, you know, the mayor, uh, I reached out to the mayor on one on uh, by Elkhorn Elementary, the sidewalk that goes up um, Thornhill Bypass. I don't know what that road's called, next to Crestwood Subdivision. Yep. There was at least one tree fell over. Uh, bushes had grown over the sidewalk. Yet children were walking up there to take their afternoon walks. And somebody, you know, sent some pictures, and um, I'd say less than ten days, the mayor had that thing cleaned up perfect. This and now they feel a lot safer walking that sidewalk. I will say this: this is the most active group of um, elected officials that I've ever been around, and I've been I've been a part of campaigns. I've worked for governments. This is the most active group that I've been around. Um, let's talk about a couple of small small victories. I live in uh, um, Arnold Ridge. Every night, my wife and I we go to um, Circle K, or we go to the um, to the if their ice machine is out, we will go to, to, get the, your, to the grocery your store. Your over, yeah, to, yeah. Get, to go over to Studman Town and and uh, Georgetown Road. But one of the things that I noticed as soon as we moved over into that area, the number of children and the number of adults who had to walk in people's backyards and in gullies. And when it rained... Talking were, about Stedman Town? So, talking about Stedman Town Lane. Um, and Circle K is the only location for food for a lot of those folks. That's also where you have to walk to get the bus to pick you up, which is around in front of Hardee's, the city transportation. When I first got started there... I begged that some of the money could be earmarked specifically for a um, a sidewalk uh, to go from the apartments all the way on the back of Stedman Town, all the way down um, Stedman Town Lane to at least Circle K. Because once you get to Circle K, you can go behind and, and get to where the bus service is. And we found out recently that that project will begin, and it's going to happen. That's a forty-year problem. Right. That that, I, that no one. I owned apartment buildings back there, yep. and for nineteen years, and tried again and again when Mr. Roach was on the city commission, father right. father Roach, father Roach, yeah, uh, to get sidewalks from there up to the Frank County High School, you know, to get onto Georgetown Road because they're walking through ditches and stuff, and I noticed just recently, and I think this is in the county, that from Silver Lake. Franklin County, to uh, Silver Lake 2, over there where HMB's at, Dr. Crumb's office, that area. Kids, if you notice in the afternoon when the high school gets out, kids are walking in the grass. Yep. I once saw a mother with four children walking in the grass coming home from school. Now imagine them carrying Why don't we have sidewalks? I, mean, if they, if that, I don't think, is Silver Lake 2 in the city or county? Uh, it's in the city. You know that would be another great place to uh, put sidewalks part on of both it sides part of the road. Of it is. Yeah, the part yeah. of it is the, okay. the back. The back two roads are not, but yeah. the okay. front is. But that would be another great location to have sidewalks. Oh, I agree, and and I think we have to really start. Focusing there's a lot of houses back here. We have to really start focusing on. You know, we have an entire we have a population in our community that is overlooked daily, and luckily with my and I say luckily because you know I truly believe this. Um, my exposure through my company and my work has really opened my eyes to the needs of uh, people in this community. You know, in, in Franklin County, you're, you, have th- you are 30 times more likely to be on government assistance than any surrounding county. 30 times. That's, that's unbelievable. That, that number is, is just hard to fathom. Um, and because of that, w- we need to understand that there is an entire group of people that have been overlooked for 
decades, and I'll go as far back as the late 50s when they, they cleaned out the crawl and, uh, and created the, um, the housing developments. Transportation hurts opportunity. That's right. And, and because of that, um, they put them in um, housing that was built by individuals that had just come back from the war, and they built them just like they had built the barracks, and we haven't upgraded our public housing Ever since then. Yeah, the sidewalks you were talking about in Indian Hills and the ones I mentioned along Georgetown Road, they're not the standard no. four foot wide sidewalks. They're six or seven feet wide, is that right? That's correct. That's so correct. that so that a kid could ride a bicycle beside his mom or dad That's correct. as they're going to school. So right. it'd be much more transportation friendly. Right. And and you know, the the problem is, is that we, we say in Frankfurt, well, we, we have buses that run you know, that don't run on time, but we, we have, I got a question about that. We too. have buses that run, um, but we don't have any other types of transportation uh, that are running. And if, if you're a, uh, we have people that have to come to our office um, for drug testing or otherwise, and it may take them two and a half hours mm. because of all the stops they have to take before they can get to downtown. That, that seems inefficient to me. It doesn't seem like it's, it's run, um, uh, quite well, and I, that's not a problem that was created by anybody that was there now. The city has just changed with regard to where housing well, is. I've always had this question. I've talked to the bus people um, one time when we first opened our restaurant. Um, I've noticed a lot of the bus stops are outside of where the people are. Yep. Like behind my restaurant um, on Leewood, those Leewood apartments, those people have to cross four lanes of traffic plus a turning lane to get to the bus stop, which is on the Juniper Hill side. One of the most dangerous roads in town. Right. And then um, you all got this fixed. Mm -hmm. uh, the one in Indian Hills across from Hardy's, they used to stand on the wall by that state building uh, in the rain and wait. And uh, over by CVS, by McDonald's on the west side of town, standing in the rain. Mm -hmm without a bus thing, you know, a, a covered bus area. Uh, same thing around, um, what's Park Hills called now? Country Lane? Country Hills. Country Hills, same thing there. They had to walk in. How come the buses don't go back to where the apartments are, where the people are? Because those folks, if they don't have transportation, they don't have a car, and it's raining, it's 15 degrees outside, they'll just not go to work because they don't want to go to work soaked. Right. They don't want to walk half a mile to get to a bus stop. How come the bus routes aren't where these big apartment complexes are in Frankfurt and Ravencrest, Carolinda, Leewood, all those different ones? That's a, that's a really good question. In fact, I think going back to what I just said, you know, when those um, routes were um, created, um, the housing wasn't in, in the manner that it was, mm -hmm. um, and it wasn't necessarily the sole dependent uh, means of transportation for a lot of people and um, it has become that and I think there is a um, a need at this point that the city needs to tackle needs to study the bus route needs to study the bus the bus needs to go to the people not the people go to the bus I'm 100% agree yeah. and, and it needs to run more often um, it, and unfortunately we're running routes with you know I don't know if you've ever seen the trolley on a Tuesday but it, you know it's empty Right, you I know, see, yeah, I've you know, that is, Eric and I have talked about that yeah, before. Yeah, so, um, but but let's talk about a couple of small wins that people don't know about. Um, a, a, an example is the uh, softball uh, tournament that happened a couple weeks ago. Um, you know, the the idea that um, government is really great at getting in its own way, right? Isn't that the isn't hey, that the truth? Yeah, because yeah. That's one of our topics to talk about. We yeah, I was saying. Jump I guess, on into that, Eric. Th yeah, let's do because we're, we're we're an hour and fifteen minutes in, and we're not even halfway through our list. Yeah, Good like, gracious! Like I one, know. One, one thing. Well, I've we got a couple compliments out there is that they're appreciating the the straight talk, the, the detail, the detail, and, yeah, and one, unfiltered. One, one thing I've wondered, and I've talked to some of the candidates in the last mayor's race about, why doesn't the city hire a person that is dedicated to solely bringing events to Frankfurt. It, it's pretty bad when Corbin, Harrisburg, Bardstown, uh, all these small towns that are ten and 11,000 people, Anderson County, boy, Anderson County has some great events. Mm -hmm. 
And economically, they're all outpacing us oh, by, by every metric humanly possible. How come possible? we don't hire somebody, or can we not say how come? I'm not getting on you, but this is just it's always bugged me. How come we don't have somebody? Their sole job is to recruit events and coordinate events because, as you know, and as Eric knows, a lot of these sports teams, when they get frustrated dealing with city government, because I play ball for forever and a day, and and I'm on Facebook all the time. You look like you could still play. Yeah, right. <laughs> Catcher, maybe. <laughs> and somebody run to first. But um, why? Are th- who would they reach out to instead of me to get help like well, we did two well, it's, weeks ago it's in the funny, softball team? Yeah, tournament. it's funny because you say, who would they reach out to? And they, they call Craig, and they go, Craig can get stuff done. And Craig picks up the phone, Craig, and he Craig goes, can. Kyle, I got a problem. Right. <laughs> and so, you well, and Katricia, yeah. I call and, you. It's and me and Katricia, and uh, and we're gonna we're gonna get things done, and and we'll talk about that. And we what did that thirty team tournament, and we got it, we got it fixed in about four days, and which has led to now a forty three team tournament. Right. Yeah, let's that, look at let, let's look at those this numbers up, Eric. Yep. Let me switch over. Here. It's a forty three team tournament. The the last one had seventeen eight teams from outside of Kentucky, twelve from inside of Kentucky. Right. This tournament. Is forty three teams. Sorry, I brought the wrong one up. But here, I, I updated the numbers with what you said. There were six sixteen. So. Yeah, yeah. There, this forty three team tournament on a field that only two of the fields are lit, meaning there's lights only on two. So they got to quit. You know, they can't go later into the night, which right. will allow more teams to right. play. Uh, six hundred and sixteen players, and fifteen hundred and forty attendees, which could be parents, grandparents, brother, sister cousins whatever especially in the younger groups because this tournament's from eight and under through 18 and under right it's run by courtney pettit who's been doing this for 12 years and coach hendrickson which is the head women's softball coach at transylvania university they're putting these tournaments on so this isn't any kind of fly by fly by night thing and the the way where i've been talking with courtney this tournament this weekend 15th to 16th it's not only going to be a tournament, it's going to be an event. They're having snow cone, yep. uh, Mr. Softy Truck's going to be mm-hmm. there, tons of other vendors. They're going to have college softball coaches there. They're going to have the metrics training. Um, if Eric can bring that back up the, on the right side of the screen, the metrics um, where they're testing, getting numbers so that the kids, the older kids can share with the universities to go get a, schol- a full or a partial scholarship. And we could do these, one, if we got the lights on the other two fields, and I have no clue what that is. I've heard all kinds of rumors. But um, if we could get lights on those other two, they don't have to be turfed, but it would be great if they were turfed because you got less rain right. outs. I, it, it, I happen to know it, a little bit about you know, but and Here's, yeah. like, my frustration with it, and, and Craig and I have talked about this a lot, is you know, everybody want, there's a lot of people that want to say, tourism and and this and that about frankfurt we're a tourist town whatever is we got these kind of facilities we could start off with small you know i'm not a sports fan i have no interest in softball tournaments uh going on at lakeview i'm gonna make you watch baseball <laughs> you gonna make me watch baseball but I, I i have no personal interest in that but i i'm also we're all entrepreneurs here i understand that if i have bodies in town Bodies are going to eat. Bodies are going to buy gas. Uh, uh, hotel rooms. Hotel rooms on the two-day events. And it takes minimal investment in in Lakeview Park to make stuff happen there. It's a matter of making, hey, you want to have your event here? Well, and so, it, well, in fact, just to back up and, and kind of give people the idea of what happened was um, a phone call came in from Courtney, and she said, hey, we – we scheduled this in January. Right. You know, we were told we had these fields, and two weeks before the tournament, we were told we don't have these fields. And so... And hotel reservations are made. Hotel reservations are made. Travel plans are made. Everything's right. made. So um, there was some confusion uh, between... F- the First and foremost, we have to understand that while the city of Frankfurt um, runs events out at Lakeview Park... We don't own Lakeview Park. That is right. that is in the county. county. That is a county-owned facility, and um, the the city did no favors with regard Oops. to with their um, decision to not allow a, a major event to occur at 
at the county-owned facility. Mm -hmm. In fact, it was one of those where I felt like we were in the Cuban Missile Crisis for a few minutes. You know, it was right. like, you know. Yeah, my well, phone was burning up. Uh, and, ju and, and it was, um, there were county officials, there were county residents, there were softball parents. Um, all of the softball parents that contacted me, they are, I'll tell you what, they are a, uh, an, an avid and uh, a very excited group. Uh, they wanted to make sure that this could happen. But as a as a parent who has a kid who's being recruited, who, who had a kid that was being recruited in one sport, now I have a child that's being recruited in another sport, you don't get opportunities to come to your town for your child to be right. um, looked at by these by uh, college colleges. Coaches. Right. These are yeah. these are and they run and what they do is they run um, they run training camps in the mornings of the of the very first morning, which is an opportunity for these fourteen and fifteen year olds to first be seen by a a college coach who they may have just hit puberty and they're able to hit a ball 250 yards where they couldn't before. This is their first chance, feet. right? 250 feet, sorry. <laughs> Although I've seen a couple of those yeah. softball players, they could hit 250 yards. Um, no, but um, it, it's it's important. And, right. um, and we don't have those facilities yet, okay? We have the ones that can, that, that can have a 40 person or a 40 team tournament, but um, not much more than that. And there's, right. a, there's a couple of reasons for that. Number one, um, the county is getting ready to implement their parks plan, right? Before they do that, um, it, it's our hope that the judge and uh, Squire Tracy and Squire Blackburn and, and those, those folks will sit down with us and we can talk about the needs of the city because um, the tourism desire for downtown Frankfurt should work cohesively with the sports tourism out there as well. The second reason is and this is an issue that you and I maybe we'll discuss tonight, maybe we won't, is that there are communities such as Elizabethtown. If you go to Elizabethtown right now, they have an entire facility that is out of this world. Well, um, all of Kentucky goes there. E exactly. The superintendent, Mark Kopp, told me he's from there, mm -hmm. that uh, they had three hotels till they went into the sports business. Yep. Now they've got 12. Yeah. And every restaurant's full, every hotel's full, every gas station selling tons of gas. Sports, sporting goods stores are selling tons of stuff. And every and all of that started. It can all be pointed to whether you talk to, you know, the Brad Thomases of the world who are experts in this field, or the Mike Mangets of the world. They can all tell you that uh, this began um, because Elizabethtown was allowed to implement a restaurant tax. And, and, mm -hmm. and I understand, and, and you and I have discussed We've this. We've discussed this that off, the how do, off, the, off, the off, mm -hmm. off the record. How, how does a tax help implement you know, uh, something of this? Well, the reason is because cities of the fourth and fifth class that used to, used to be fourth and fifth class, we don't have classes of cities right. anymore, but these cities, they're allowed to have a um, restaurant tax and all of the money goes to their um, tourism what department. does that do to the business of the restaurant? It actually it, in the beginning, because it, in the beginning, like at my place, at mine, right. Scott King's place, um, ninety-five percent of our customers are locals. I would agree with that. I okay, with that. so 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 you and I have talked about this, and you've convinced me to uh, look at this from a different perspective. Um, and and I hope people know that's how I look at everything. If somebody brings uh, something like this to me. I think there needs to be a phased in approach for local businesses already. Um, for someone who makes, let's say, five hundred thousand dollars in revenue a year, um, and you're not a corporate franchise, um, you should pay a, a, a different portion, or not have a portion, or you mean collect? Collect. Not that's pay. correct. Collect. That's correct. Collect. Um, but in in real terms, you're turning around and paying that amount back to the... Right. We're administratively handling tax That's collecting correct. for the city. That's correct. We're yeah. a tax collector. And we thank you. I'm sure you... Right. Exactly. And, and, and I think that's Order an important thing. Yeah. It, it's like... And I think it's an important thing for people to understand is it's just like sales tax. It is. The restaurant is not getting any benefit. It's all coming from the city. It costs us city. time and effort. It costs and small businesses but, effort and but, time. But, but, but. And this is where Kyle and I had a lengthy discussion. I, I this, saying, is, this is where I'll, I'll disagree, too. This is, yeah. this is the but. Because every city who has implemented this, and, and there are only maybe 33, I think, that have implemented this tax. Every one of them has seen all of the restaurants that were there and continue to be there seen a major uptick in their own not revenues. initially not initially but which is which is why we, i we've said we've got what 
13 ball fields? That's well, but However there's many. a problem, but there's a problem with that. And you know, you know what the other yeah. problem with that is, but I drive around and I'll post a video on mm -hmm. Facebook when I go down to Capitol view and nobody's there. Yep. Nobody's at the two baseball fields in the back. Nobody's at two softball fields on it. Nobody's at state stadium. Nobody's at East Frankfort park. That's lost revenue. We'll never get back. I agree with you. And because we don't have somebody in this city government that should be tasked with or hire somebody new that will recruit these tournaments because of we got the best thing of anybody. We got location. We do. They like our fields. Mm -hmm. uh, the uh, Courtney's out of Jessamine County. The coach is out of Trent, out of Lexington. Uh, the men's softball guy is out of Louisville. Uh, then we've got uh, Troy Hearns doing our mountain biking, but mm -hmm. Troy's a state employee, so he can't dedicate to it. Troy uh, does a great Aaron, job. At yeah, that. he does. Yeah. Aaron Ashcraft does disc golf. Anthony Russell does youth baseball. These are all volunteers. All volunteers. All volunteers. Yep. And we all we got a little group that you know when something's going on that that we do. Uh, I, uh, my restaurant sponsors a uh, disc golf tournament in March. And, you know, more business could do that, which brings more people and which generates more revenue. I, w I will say this. Um, you know, one of the things that people always tell me in, in city meetings is city is not run like a business. And that goes all through. Yeah, me. it should be. It absolutely should be run like a business. And, and with the caveat that you have certain responsibilities mm -hmm. to your fellow man to, to provide services. But at the end of the day, you need to make the most money there is, um, and to keep the taxes be, down on keep your the taxes down and to and to be good stewards. Now, there are a number of areas in which the city should seriously consider privatizing that other communities have already privatized. You're talking trash collection. Trash collection is one. The county privatizes. Um, the, the county doesn't and have. And it's a, collected through our property tax. It's collected through your property tax. However. Um, and they're great. Our and, solid waste services. We got the 96 gallon cans right. where the city's got those little bitty things. We, and yeah, they're great. I don't um, even understand that either. And, you, Eric? And, Not at all. And, I'll, I'll, and so, and so you, you have areas like that, but also, um, there are a number of communities who have already gone to privatizing, um, the sports, um, and, uh, if you will, sports um, commission, sports commissions, like if you Paducah, will. McCracken County or Paducah. Yeah, but they're actually run by third parties, and and those third parties are businesses that are in the business of making money. Correct. And then they turn around and guess what they do? They write a fat check to the city and the county at the end of each quarter or month or whatever mm -hmm. it is. And I think in Paducah, it was a you know they were looking at a couple million dollars um, of actual gaining money correct do you know do yeah, you know how much it you know how much it costs to keep to just run the juniper hills golf course and the pool at juniper hills i think the golf course operates at around <laughs> a three hundred fifty thousand dollar deficit correct it is about seven hundred thousand dollars in to the run red both. to run both of those and they go well you know uh, former mayor bill may once told me when we were uh, when i was running against him um he said you never make money in parks and and that's the why that's Why? the mantra that, that people in government have had for years. Why? But see, that's the real, the, that's the problem that I have is. Totally agree. Everybody wants tax, tax, tax. We need more tax money. We need more of this. We need more of that. We can't do it because we got to spend. If we leverage what we have, make use, somebody brings stuff in, be it sports, tourism, arts, music, whatever, you collect so many incidental dollars just by people being here. You know, every, we're not a, I don't see us as a tourist destination. We're a tourist pass-through. Oh, oh, but it's, that's for now. I, I was going to say, I hope you're not disagreeing with him. Yeah, I say. Yeah. For now. Because right. if you leverage what we have and realize what we are and be realistic and run it like a business and we collect tax dollars, then the community has dollars to work with. Along with that comes Having pride in the community. Oh, yeah. Taking care of what we have. We are so good at light building diffuse. stuff. Huh? Light the fuse. Uh, light the fuse. Yeah, here we, we go. are so good at building stuff. We are so good at spending money. And and everybody, it's not a personal attack on Kyle. This is my 25 attack, year. Attack away. 
This is my 25 year frustration with Frankfurt. This has not changed. We're so good at building stuff. We're so terrible at taking care of stuff. There is no pride in the community that comes from government down to the citizens. And that's something that the citizens of Frankfurt have to realize too, because all of these issues that I have and Craig and I have talked about literally since, since 94, the, the, 94, 95, right literally. when the internet started. And it's never changed. It's you never some, changed. You got some photos I there, have, Eric? Yeah, I have all kinds of photos. So so the, the great thing about uh, but these, these, these things Eric's talking about, are easy to fix. Oh, I agree. Easy to fix. Piece easy to I fix. Agree. If cost. we want to pretend to be a tourist town, we as a community, as a government, need to have enough pride to just take care of stuff. Can, can, hopefully, you can see, can see that it. picture. Okay. Yep. So that's going down East Main. That's the mm-hmm. you know part of the new bike lane we just built. That, that that person that looked like they were drunk. That they were. That, they well, <laughs> well, I'm not going to pick on the line. Uh, <laughs> well, <laughs> I've seen I've seen some lines down the first base that look like that in some of the softball. So that that's or, more down there with yep. with the uh, bike lanes. Uh, that's the center of East Main Street going down the hill. Just trash, trashy look. These another bike lane. I know a guy who rides road bikes. Won't use the bike lanes mm-hmm. because. Anybody knows anything about bike road bikes? They have skinny tires and they're, they're small. Yeah. They're designed to cut through the air and go fast. He said those kind of rocks are detrimental if you hit one at speed. And those guys don't ride slow. They ride with the speed well, of traffic. Anybody ride if they ride a bicycle to work, which you don't see no. very rarely, no. because they'll get flat tires going down. Running mm-hmm. the same thing. I wouldn't do it because, like we talked about, I don't want to end up at work hot and sweaty. Right, you know, yeah. I'm, I'm right not, there with you. Right? I, I'm not in the, con- the the physical condition to to but do young that. Pe- young people, if you don't have transportation, yep. bicycles are cheap yep. mode of transportation. It is. Uh, when I was in college, I rode bikes a lot, and then we get if you go to any intersection in Franklin County, right. and if you notice these that I pull up are not off the path. These are the pathways that we roads. are bringing in, quote unquote, tourists. These are the. The, the way that we're bringing people into our city is saying, welcome to Frankfurt. And there's not enough pride to take care of this. Do you that, have, that's by Chick-fil-A. Do you have the photos of where of what we were talking what about? Yes, I do. Yeah, okay. th- they're right. on there. Um, so that's, down that's East, East, Main, West, East, West East West Connector. Weed killer. That's all yeah. you need. Weed killer. And this is a this is a 30-year problem. Tell me about this right 30. here, Eric, what you did. So I'm going down the hill. Um, West Frankfurt Connector. West Frankfurt Connector from Collins Lane down to Old Lawrenceburg Road. So I'm driving down through there, and then I get down at the bottom. I turn around and come back because this weed that's right beside this truck or this SUV, I saw it from the other side of the road coming down. I'm thinking, I can see weeds on the other side of the wall sticking up. Yep. So I, I had to come back and take pictures of that. But it's just continued. Uh, Buffalo Trace uh, used to be a state building. Everybody, I, and I don't like to pick on Buffalo Trace just to pick on Buffalo Trace because they do bring a lot of revenue to our community, and they provide a lot of jobs for our community. But they're not a very good steward of their things. If that post was my office, house, post office looks the same way. The post office looks the same way. Yeah. And but if that was my house, would you get cited by the city? Would I be cited? I oh well, well no, but well, but, that's but, just a question. but I understand. But I understand the, okay, the, the, the is, premise. Yes, is, is okay. Is there a city ordinance that it would allow me to be cited for that? For um, not for being filthy, not not for not for being filthy, but there the if, weeds. If there was yeah overgrowth, and yes. that's what I was talking about earlier when I said all of it's not on the city. Yeah, you know, there's a point of responsibility for a homeowner. Like if you mow, and I think you have to mow all the way like to the edge of the road, the other side of the sidewalk, and a lot of times right. you see that not mowed. Um, and that's where we got to take pride in our community. Obviously, citizens aren't going to get up here in the you know, middle of the road and do that. That falls on the city, county. Which, I don't know who it falls which on. Which brings up a question, and I know I can already see what you're going to say. Because I it, had this question of you. Is it? Is it? It's a... St- is that one, Eric has asked me this, and I said, I didn't know. Is there a map of state 
that designates like red is city roads, blue yes. is state roads. Yes. Okay. Second, second is if I'm stepping on your toes. You might be. But this wh- okay. Why would the city wait on the state yes. to cut the weeds when it's our city and there's only three or four guys out at the county maintenance barn and they're two years behind schedule because that's what they told me last fall when what we're getting ready to talk about. Why do we wait on the state to but beautify our city? This is a perfect example because it's that's Wilkerson right before uh, coming up towards Spaghetti Junction right before mm-hmm. you get to um, Home Street exit. When were these pictures taken, Eric? They were taken today. About 3 p.m. today. These are fresh. Do you hot know, off the press. Hot off the press. Do you know if Wilkerson, is that state, county, city? It's city. It's city? That's okay. at, at that point, it is. Okay, so let's pretend for a minute to, to expand on what Craig was saying. If that was a state road, mm-hmm. can is there anything that says that the city can't send bodies down there to clean that up? No, there's nothing. However, you know, from a liability standpoint, um, do we... Do we then turn around and send a bill to the state transportation cabinet and ask why not? for it? I mean, I don't have a problem with it. I mean, why not call up Secretary and Grace and say, Hey, we're gonna maintain your roads, you just gotta pay us for it. Well And I don't I don't mind the collection of, of that. It's but not, we should it should be less about the money and more about it's an impact on our community and what people see in the impression and we leave. Tourism. And, and, and tourism. And tourism. Now now I will also say this. Um I know there's been a lot of talk about um waste management and things of that nature and public works as well. Um, there's been a lot of turnover. There's been a lot of individuals who... Didn't uh, the who director have, who just left. resign? The, just, the director just resigned. Um, and um, those are amazing humans. They all yeah. work very, very oh, hard. And they ridiculously are... Ridiculously hard. Oh, yeah. yeah. And uh, I talked to one today at church, and, and he said, you know, we're getting home at 5.30 every night. And I know that people think that we're, you know, we're not doing our job, but we're really working hard. Right. I believe that. And Get out I, there at 5.30 no, in the morning that. and watch and, them pick your right. cash up at 5.30 so, a.m. Yeah, and so I'm, and so what we need is we need more staff to be able to handle these right. issues. It, Let, it should be a constant. Let's go on through the pictures real quick, and we'll, we'll yep. sum it all up together. So that's coming up. This has been like that for years. Yep. Um, that's the curb being busted up, rocks, you know, be it snow plows or whatever causes that. doesn't matter. It's an eyesore. It needs to be cleaned up. Now these are the ones that 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 Craig brought. And yeah, wanna, here we go. You want to go ahead and talk about those? Yeah, I've been trying to get this cleaned up since Keith Parker was city manager. So mm-hmm. how many ma- city manager goals was that? Well, it was only, only three. two. Only two. Two, well, two yeah. or three. Okay. But but you never you never are, asked me, Craig. That's correct. And um, so when we didn't get any action before, and I don't know if it was when Keith was fired or city manager Parker was fired. Um, there was so much trash up in the trees and on the ground uh, that I reached out to jailer um, Banta, Jake Banta, to send his cleaning crew out there on two different occasions because I drive by that every day. That's and the entrance to our city. It is. It's yeah, it's the about number to, one. It's the number to be one a bigger. Entrance. Yeah, it's the number one. Is, that so, is welcome to Frankfurt. So that used to be a beautiful stone wall, mm-hmm. like they've had they've had in Lexington. And and right here is. And you know, now it is the, to keep those trees down. I even went to the county road department and tried to bribe them with a bunch of pizza <laughs> to get it them. It didn't to, work? No, because uh, <laughs> it didn't work because when I was in transportation, they had like 14 people in that maintenance barn. Right. Now they got three. Right. Or as of last couple fall, right. fall, they had three. I wanted to just take that thing that uh, you go down the side of the road and, and knock the tree branches back, yep. you know, just obliterates the limbs the 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 bush hog on an arm the bush yeah. hog on an arm and he said we can't do that it'll make a bigger mess i said man go over here and tell me it'll make a bigger mess than what it is. it is but if we could cut it down if we could get all the trees off the wall get all the vines that are grown up over the, off the wall that is the main entrance ever every, every le- legislator that comes into this town drives that road you're correct. For two months, or for yep. uh, really four months. Right. Uh, every tourist that goes to an event downtown from the west side of Kentucky comes in on that road. Yep. And it, every every state employee, ever everybody that lives on the beyond the west side of Franklin County comes to Frankfurt on that road. Ninety, you know. And so we can't clean it up. Why is there not? I mean, we just got the Frankfurt 
welcome signs. That's right. Fixed. That's right. And it, because, t- and it took you making a post on Because Facebook. of some bitching, yeah, yeah, and reaching out to Patricia, mm-hmm. Cat- Catrice, Commissioner Waldridge. She ran with it and got them fixed pretty darn quick. But why does it take – who's in charge of that kind of stuff to beautify Frankfurt? So help uh, me out. I didn't, I didn't know we were going to talk about weeds today. I would have brought my Roundup and, and been able well, to – Roundup yeah. causes cancer. It does. It um, does. Vinegar. Um, so, so um, let me let me say this: the fact that you would bring Roundup, that's kind of passive aggressive. Like you want to give us cancer? No, no. It's it. <laughs> my my dad's actually in that that uh, class action suit. So oh, believe okay. it or not. So, um, no. The to answer to answer your question um, very bluntly, it's all of our responsibility, and and we're all a little blind to it. You know, it's our it, it's our town. You know, it's our house. You know, we don't realize our house smells and when other people come in. They yeah. they they can tell. However, um, uh, let me say this. When I went to Lebanon, Kentucky, mm-hmm. town of about nine, 10,000 mm-hmm. people, my son worked down there. Yep. First time I went down there to take him to lunch, that town was so clean, mm-hmm. I noticed it. Who's, who's Lebanon's, uh, who, who's their uh, house member? Uh, top of my head, I don't know. Their, their U.S. house member? Yeah. yeah. Oh, uh, Representative Comer? Yeah. Who's, our, who's, who's now our? Representative Jamie Comer, James That's Comer. Right. That's right. And then we went to Campbellsville. There's a big steakhouse in Campbellsville. Mm-hmm. The whole 20 miles to Campbellsville. There's, I'm looking now because you know I noticed how clean it was. Mm-hmm. I'm looking for McDonald's cups or Wendy cups or a bag of trash, yep. anything, a brown paper bag. There's nothing. Yep. So those little bitty towns are spending money to keep their town clean. You're right. And they've got bourbon down there, and it's not. And they're growing. They got factories, right. down, warehouses down there like crazy. And you, and it's not necessarily city government employees doing that. I work. don't know who's doing it. So, is it a program that they're doing to teach their citizens not to litter? I doubt it. But what, but what, um, what you have seen with regard to the work that this group has done? You texted me that at. Um, I think ten o'clock this morning, nine thirty this morning, about the um, the west side. Was yeah, it that early? Right. Okay. Yeah, around that time. So um, on the way to church, I sent um, a text to uh, City Manager Peevler and City Manager Monroe and to the mayor, and I said, "This isn't okay. It's not okay that I'm getting the some complaints about this. It's not okay that that's getting ready to be a huge area for the city of Frankfurt." Um, this needs to be fixed. And if we can't fix it, if we don't have the the manpower to fix it, because that was the issue with regard to trash, we don't have the manpower, um, which we do now, thank goodness. Mm-hmm. But if we don't have the public works manpower, then the city and county who benefit from the tax, the taxes out there, they mm-hmm. need to hire a third party that can clean it up in a day and a half or two days and yeah, get it all. One of the tree services. One of the tree services, mm-hmm. one of the large tree services, and have it, you know, and if it's less than, um, you know, whatever the the deal is that you have to have for requisitions and RFPs, let the city and the county split it so it's lower than that. That way you can have a, a local individual, you know, bid it out and do it. But it needs to be done. And the problem is it's not just that the citizens don't care about Frankfurt. It's that the people well, I think who, the citizens do care. It's, it's the people who come in and invest in Frankfurt, whether they are um, – I'll give a good example. If they're an apartment owner and the uh, the apartment owner lives in Philadelphia, right? right. Um, they don't give two flips about Frankfurt right. at all. Right. If you own um, where Walmart is, the shopping center where Walmart is, or the property that uh, O Charlie sits on right now, you don't care about what that looks like. You don't care at all. And that is very likely m- much of your responsibility. And they're not going to come fix it because we're not enforcing... The codes that we then do we, have. I would say then we need either better codes and we need to enforce codes. We just need to enforce codes. I, mean, I know we, we have them. them, right. But, you know, if if the code is strong enough to where I don't care if you clean it up because when I find you and you pay it, mm-hmm. it's going to be high enough. I'm going to pay someone else to do it, and we're still going to pay for the administrative cost for contract, you know, find, locating a contractor for that. Well, and, ho- and I hope that there is um, – the wherewithal and and the uh, backbone in the county attorney's office, and I'll say this to 
um, the county attorney calmly, who I, I have a ton of respect for. Um, I know these seem like little piddly ordinance mm-hmm. violations. But these are big deals. Small victories. Small victories. You're absolutely right. right. That if you come into a clean town, you're impressed. You go into a dirty town, you don't go back. You're absolutely right. And and the reality is that when people come into town, first thing they're looking for is, where am I going to stop to use the bathroom? Where am I going to, where, where am I going to grab something to eat? Right. right? You don't want to stop at a place like that where you see an empty O Charlie's and you see, you know, overgrowth into the parking lot of the uh, of the, near yeah, to, the ba- uh, gr- gas so station. To, to go back to our earlier conversation, when you enter in Frankfurt like that and it looks like that and it's run down and it's trashy, it looks like an opioid, opioid epidemic. It does. It does, absolutely. I mean, and, and, and like I said, these problems have been like forever. And I've, Craig those and I've asked this yeah, question. Those trees didn't grow up overnight. You're right. And the problem is, you know, when people say, well, it's because of this or because of that. And that's where I've said a lot of times that we need strong leadership in Frankfurt is it's not my problem or I didn't cause it. It's not my fault, but it is my problem Mm -hmm. is we need leaders that will come up and say, I'll take care of it. I didn't create this mess, but I'm here now. That's mine. I got it. Well, and that, and that, I think you see that with at least a majority of the folks um, we do. On, on the board, um, you know, and I go back to the softball thing, I go to the, the sidewalk issue. W- when we have an issue, we, we own it. That's our, that's our baby, you know, right. and I wasn't going to stop until, you know, we, we made sure that there was softball being played. Um, but, you know, with something like this, w- with beautification and things like that, you know, it's not the citizen's responsibility, but it's the leadership that has um, gotten us here again. And then maintaining it as maintaining Eric said it before, the, because if you keep that grass cut, yeah, even if it is state property, I'd if totally we agree. keep it cut, those trees will never grow back, I and agree. those vines will never grow up that wall, and and, and, the, and the trash will right. stop being thrown there because everybody can see it. Yeah, like we, you know, I remember as as a child going to to Vero Beach. Uh, on vacation one year and the neatest thing i ever saw was every morning like between like six and seven a.m there were street sweepers going up and down the road Mm -hmm. by the time tourists were up and moving around in vero beach um it was spotless it was immaculate and i don't know why frankfurt can't have we used to have street sweepers at least a street sweeper running all the time i realize there's a cost there there's maintenance there's upkeep and there's there's all of that but we got a rainy day fund you could probably use some of that rainy day fund to fund that for you know but a when year. When I was when I worked at transportation on High Street, a third shift that street sweep went by, I think every morning, every spraying morning. water and vacuuming up trash. And and getting back to the one issue that you and I disagree on, and, and you as well, Eric, um, Elizabethtown, that has five hundred fewer residents. Talking than, about the restaurant tax. Yeah, yeah. five hundred fewer residents than frankfurt does all i want to see is as we talked about is if a rest i don't want it I understand. because it'll impact my customers i understand it possibly could cost me customers but i don't i experience this in state government in downtimes. Mm-hmm. i wouldn't want to see that tax revenue disappear into the general fund oh i agree and not be directed towards what it was or yeah. sports complexes yeah continual you, upgrades will you let me finish yes go ahead thank you you're welcome go, Wait, go ahead because I, I got a hammer when you're done it's go right ahead. okay um elizabeth town 500 fewer people their city budget is 77 million dollars ours is 43 mm-hmm. million dollars and th- there ain't nothing special that they have that we don't have other than sports tourism right and the fact that they were able to utilize the funds from that tax to be able to build the parks that they have, mm-hmm. right? Um, in addition to that, um, we have every natural resource that they would dream sure. of having. They got no water. They, they have no water. They don't have a railway that could potentially right carry the of town. that could go, that could potentially hold um, passenger uh, traffic, which it could. Um, they don't have a waterway that um, is navigable. Um, they don't have. Um, I mean, you got a mean to get to Elizabethtown. We are at the crossroads <laughs> of 64 and 75, right? I mean, we and we have we have our own airport. 
I mean, we have all of these that things Lear jets land on. that Lear jets land on and go to Buffalo Trace. And we have all of these things. We have the oldest continuous distiller ever in the United States. It's over 200 years old. Buffalo Trace. Buffalo Trace. And we have all of these things that are here, right? We haven't even touched on a bunch of them. And, and um, you know, I agree with everyone that comes to me and says, we don't have anything for children. We don't have anything for the kids to do. I agree. I agree. Well, why don't they step up? Because I know, agree. We see I those posts. Yep. We're all entrepreneurs. We all risked right. a lot of stuff to open our own business. We didn't complain about something. And, right. I, you know, it's okay to complain. This is the United States. But if you see a problem, fix a problem. Be a solution, not a not a, a impediment. Right. So I just happen to have a lot of experience uh, going back and forth to E-Town uh, since 99 when I worked at Farmer's Bank, started working at Farmer's Bank, spent a lot of time in E-Town well before they established their their hotel tax, whatever it's called. Was it short-term? They're, they have a, they have the short-term rental tax, but they also have the restaurant tax, which is the right. one that we're well, talking about. Right, well, and I was going to name both of those. Before right. before they had either one of the on the hotel or restaurant, and I never went to E-Town, and it looked anything like Frankfurt does. So I think they started with pride before they started with taxes. I, I agree, but you also have to understand that the city of Frankfurt has suffered from 225 years of corruption. And there's that, huh? Huh? We were, we were founded by the person that um, Teddy Roosevelt said was the greatest traitor in the history of the United States. Benedict Arnold? No. Uh, <laughs> General Wilkinson, yeah. which, um, I mean— he essentially created Frank, or he founded Frankfurt, took the land tracks from other people, mm. and tried to sell the state of Kentucky to the um, Spanish Empire. I mean, he was a traitor, right? And that is that is the founding of of the city of Frankfurt. We are the only capital um, uh, that has had. We're the sm- fourth smallest. Capital. Fourth smallest, it, and we've been the third, and now we're the fourth. Mm. But um, we're the only capital that has had. Um, capital city that has had two governors at the same time twice. Yeah. Twice. I mean, that doesn't happen unless yeah. you're in a, in a corrupt area. And, and I'm not saying that the local politicians are corrupt. What I'm saying is that for a hundred years, it was who you knew and what, and not necessarily what you right. knew. And, and so now we're in a position where um, places like, uh, Elizabethtown that don't have the necessarily the 220 year history that we do plus the uh, capital plus that plus big the, plus limestone that ca- building that's plus in that, the capital Avenue. that's right it's that's marble brother I mean uh, that's well, I thought marble. Limestone. oh no it's marble okay. trust me you I know can't, on the inside is marble yeah um and and so because of that we have a history that does not lend itself to people who want to take pride in an area where they're worried about the name on the front of the jersey instead of the name on the back. Mm-hmm. And that's the problem that we have in this community. We worry more in local government, or we have in local government over the last 25 years, of whose name is going to be on what building than what the dang building is going to cost right. us. You know? I mean, I, well, I, like I, our police, I, our I'll, police building. I'll, and I'll talk, I'll, I'll, I'll mention that specifically. You know, um, Andy Layson told us. If, if you go all the way back to 2003, when, when those discussions started, um, Commissioner Layson said, this is the most inefficient architecture I've ever seen in my life. This will be right. the most inefficient You're talking about building. the police department, right? Police department. That does not fit in with 2nd that's, Street that's at right. all. That's right. But if you were to build a building like that and put a, pl- a pizza station there, they'd definitely fine you and not let you build it that way. Right. But that's neither here nor there. He, But Commissioner Layson said, you know, as a structural engineer, I can tell you this is going to be an inefficient building. He was a structural engineer. And so Andy now, was, and so is. and so now we look at it and we find out that the energy efficiency in that building is at thirty percent. That's a cool looking building. I mean, yeah. And you got a parking lot that water drains through it. Right. Well, we have the YMCA on the other side that's going to fall into the river and kill somebody if we the don't. Old do y- the old yeah. the one up by the Singing Bridge. That's correct. What is the hold up on that? I mean, Litigation. my goodness, there's there's trees growing inside of it. There it are. looks like there are. You know, there, the the issue um, there is uh, is one that I could I, I could say about a number of things that just sum it up in a nutshell if you can. Uh, 
there are people who want a little more than what a property is actually valued at, and there's not the gumption. Wasn't it originally sold for a dollar? It was, and then there's there's people at the city, or there have been people at the city that don't have the gumption to say no and to enforce the laws. You know, and sometimes, you know, when we look at history or whatever, I, I think we have a history of shooting ourselves in the foot in front. Oh, we have we have no more. Feet. And I, I and I happen to have a perfect example of that. You know oh. what's not on there? Anything in Frankfurt? Anything in Frankfurt or Buffalo Trace. That's my okay. that's my favorite sign I've ever seen put so up in my lifetime. I looked at that sign. There are 30. Okay, we want to get people downtown. We want to talk tourism. So we get them downtown. We put a sign up next to a bakery whose owner used to be a baker for who? Taylor Swift. She's very good at what she does. Oh, it's fantastic. And we give them 35 options to leave Frankfurt and spend their money somewhere else. If somebody had told me that Taylor Swift would be mentioned in this conversation, I would have told you. would have come no ready? I would, hell oh, yeah. yeah. I would have, that, I would, was, that was a shot. my favorite one. That was a um, s- no, I, I totally agree. I agree with that. I agree with, um, you know. Why is, who, who put that sign there? That, that's oh, it a, doesn't matter who put it there. Why is it still there? Why doesn't it point? Because it, why doesn't it point to it goes back, it goes, businesses in yeah, Frankfurt? Yeah, it, it goes exactly back to what I just said: is that there are, there are people in City Hall for many years who are afraid to go say say to somebody, "Take it down. That's not okay. Yeah. No." And instead, um, now if that would have said, "Go get one of the best burgers around and, and go down go down to Main Street Diner, go down to go to Gibby's or go to." Buddy's Pizza. Anywhere, yeah. yeah. But but I mean that that sign belongs in in Bardstown, and it's not updated either because I see Three Boys Farm on there. Mm-hmm. Now it's uh it's another name. Yeah. Um, yeah. And Steve Coffee's son. Well, is why does Master wh- Distiller? Why, why are you know why are we spending funds and resources on um, you know building events up and things for say Castle and Key? It's in for sales. Even though they claim to be in Frankfurt, they're not. So I wanted: do we get so the property tax rate zero? Well, they, even well, though they claim Frankfurt, across a, the um, parking lot across the street that's empty, the gravel parking, the gravel lot. parking lot, yeah. that's in Franklin County. But the, the distillery's in Woodford. That's correct. And I told I told uh, uh, Judge Executive Kays that that will be. And I the love ne- Castle and Key. I, I do too. They're I, a great. I, I told them that we were that we were going to. Uh, Annex over there, and if we needed to have a, <laughs> a battle, we felt like we had uh, more guns with, than with Judge County. K. With Judge Case, yeah. So, so yeah. And, and some Castle and Key is a cool place. It, it is. is super cool. I used to love to go out there on my motorcycle before they were bought and fixed it back up. It was just so old and neat looking. Yeah. That you could tell some stuff had really it went on really there. Cool. I got it I got run really out cool by whoever had the shotgun out there several the times. Yeah. Way back in scary. the day. Yeah. But yeah. You know, and we're talking about distilleries, and this is one that Craig has brought up before, is why are there not buffaloes all over Franklin? Oh, that's a good one. That's why, a really good one. Why are we not embracing that? If we if if we want we their tax dollars LA, so much. First episode. Yeah. yeah. So so it's it's interesting you mentioned that. All right. Because I'm a Buffalo fan. Because I love Buffalo. I, I'm trees. a Buffalo fan too. And yeah. and I'm not, not a Buffalo and I, Bills. And I'm not a I'm not a bourbon fan i don't i don't love drinking I don't bourbon drink a, i don't drink at all but uh, so I, I just love the idea that we have this historic um nature that you watch a show like yellowstone and they go they got buffalo trace here right. like it's the best thing ever yeah. that that gets you excited yeah, you see our local bourbons on 100 percent tv shows so wouldn't it be cool if there was a civic pride event that um just like they had in lexington with the horses or in cincinnati with the pigs and in Chicago with the cows, mm-hmm. and um, we got local artists. I'm just talking off the cuff here. Not yeah, never never the, had a discussion the, about this with anybody in right, local yeah, government. No, yeah. um, and that we um, had an art installation, and we auctioned these off to, we got to local people. Fly. We and got the, a we do. Fly. Is we that what that squares, is? Though. We got squared. We got a we dinosaur got a or something triangle. on the. Yeah. Where do the? I mean, why don't we have buffaloes? They can't be that hard to make if they're artists. Well, they're not, and so, and so. The, the hope is that at every intersection, at some point in the near future, um, after you clean it up, yeah. Well, we, you can't put them <laughs> there if they're still dirty. Um, and what would you call those intersections, Kyle? Medians, Buffalo Crossings. Buffalo Crossings, very good, very Eric good. Came up with that. Actually, last week. it's really funny. Uh, after your all's first um, podcast, 
I actually took your idea and the picture that you sent me uh-huh. and sent it of to, the yeah, hoof, hoof of, to Penny Peevler and uh-huh. said, we need to do this in green and tan with the um, buffalo trace with the colors. Bu- with the buffalo trace colors with black hooves all the way around them at, at every intersection. And uh, she said, I will be talking to someone about that. But we would put, hopefully someday, have um, buffaloes around like Lexington have horses. This is, this is about an 18-month process. I'm going to yeah. get killed for talking about this. I mean, I'm, this. I'm tired of this getting is, trolled by the yeah. mayor of Lawrenceburg, yeah. Troy Young, yeah. and the mayor of Versailles yeah. about their things. Right. And they're much smaller than us. They are. And... They keep teasing me about uh, online so everybody can sure. see it, about what they got and what we don't. Right. Have. Well, I, I think um, I think you will see a Civic Pride event that will take about 18 months. It, it, if we, if we had little buffaloes around like Lexington had thoroughbreds, mm-hmm. I think that would be really I cool. Mean, I mean, if I could find a buffalo and put it I, on top of the welcome sign, I'd do it right now. If, if I could partake in it and I could cover it with my company logo, I'm not an artist, but I could, but you could hire an artist to do it, right? And cover it with my with, with my company it logo. You. I can Photoshop, Photoshop it. it. I'm pretty good. Yeah. I think it would be great if we incorporated it with our uh, new downtown um, uh, boutique hotels. That but why couldn't we have buffaloes at Juniper Hill? Oh, I think I think you absolutely you know, could. There's more to Frankfurt than downtown. Downtown, and that's oh. a sore spot, and that's where your idea of the six wards is going to come in. The, Handy because I think there's a lot of citizenry, citizenry out there that is very, very tired of four blocks of Franklin County getting all the attention. Well, it's funny, you know, when I when I started on the city commission, I found out real quick that the majority of the of the people that work at City Hall and the majority of the people who ha- had been on the commission and, and some that were on the commission believed that the city of Frankfurt boundaries were from the Capitol to the transportation building. Mm-hmm. And that was that was the entire yeah. boundary. I'm, I, I'm shocked it's that far. I, well, I, I'm surprised it went over Capitol Avenue Bridge. Well, only bec- only because the state owned the other um, part. But um, you know, when you consider how large Frankfurt truly is, yes, and um, there has been no representation of, of many of those individuals, and a lot of people just say, and you've heard this, Craig, you've mm-hmm. heard it too, Eric. Why would I even run for public office, or why would I put my neck out there? I'm not going to get paid anything. I, I don't have the time. It's going to add all the the added frustration. Um, if you know three or four people are are going to be on the board that are going to be represented by, you know, the downtown area because they are they're the heaviest voters mm-hmm. in, in certain areas. And, and in different elections, different areas are 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 um, our higher voter um, right. uh, turnout. So you're talking about it in 2024. You're going to have a presidential election, a presidential election where this city who is notoriously Democrat in nature, voted overwhelmingly twice for in a row for, for Donald Trump. And uh, so you you have you have an How'd opportunity for... We don't want to go... We don't, I mean, we're well, not going it, into politics. That's a, whole, that's a whole other issue. That's, that's but a, but I, think, I think the wards will allow for better representation of yeah. the entire city. Yeah. And, and, and I think people will... Initially, people are going to go, wait, wait, wait a second. You're changing the whole... Well, but you're going to have a representative that you can call. And up. the problem with wanting to take care of downtown Frankfurt and, and make it a quote unquote tourist destination is there's a very very finite amount of space, parking, and opportunity to do events to generate capital. But well, there's, there's less now with a parking garage right, coming. But there, <laughs> yeah. there, we we we're going to have our fifth parking garage. I reckon we could maybe work something out with the state government, but the city in the past has utilized the bus service to fill up other parking lots that aren't, you know, where they're not near that event, and they transport the people to the event. And that's worked out well in the past. It has. When, when the city is coordinated with the people holding the events. And that's what a lot of cities do. They, I forget what the term is, but uh, if you hold, say you hold an event at Juniper Hills, Juniper Hill, you can park down at the Capitol, you can park down at State Office Building parking lot, the parking, not the garage. The and we'll lot. bring you my bus. And bring, yeah. get on bus and hop up there. Sure. Or, um, I mean, those kind of things, just a little, again, back to my event coordinator, event programmer for city government that could have their finger on the pulse and do those kind of things. And once you get started doing it, it's second nature. 
it's easy to pull all the parts You're right. together You're right. to make it succeed. Can I can I tell you all I can't I can't drop all the big secrets tonight, but soon I'll be able to drop a bunch of big secrets. But can I tell you a little bit about what we do know is going on uh, in the city of Frankfurt? Sure. Yeah, I, I think it'd probably be a good good place to to wrap up. We're we're two hours in, and yeah, we'll let you have to. I'll d- I'll do this, but then you get to let me talk about sports stats for two minutes to blow your mind. All right, I'll give you two. minutes. Okay, we'll talk then. So. <laughs> We have a lot of things on the horizon um, that uh, should be announced in the next six months. I'll say that they'll be announced in the next 90 days, most likely. Things that you you guys you guys wouldn't believe would ever be in Frankfort, Kentucky, and it it brings up the issues of the, the beautification even even more importantly. Um, however, we've been working together um, as a commission to improve access to our park systems and quality of life issues that all of our surveys and public meetings indicate the citizens of Frankfurt want. We've, we're updating uh, those as we can. The ones that we own, um, we're trying to update those as we can. You know, we don't own um, the largest park in town, Capital which is Capitol View. View. Um, hopefully that, that will change soon. Um, that's one of our goals. Um, a lot of people don't know that. That's one of the first things that we, we tried to do as well. Um, as visitors discover um, us through visiting the state capital, our, our culture and historic tourism offerings in Buffalo Trace, um, our tourism uh, numbers and our members have climbed. Even on a s- Saturday, like just yesterday, um, there are four or five new lodging projects, including the 50-room boutique hotel and the old Simon Furniture Warehouse on Broadway, which is going to open in, in early of next year. Yeah, that's going to be it, pretty it's darn nice. It's going to re- be really nice. The hotel also also is going to feature a new restaurant. Um, the E.H. Taylor House it used to be um, the Heritage Council. It's actually going to be one as well. It's going to be a, a little boutique hotel. Um, on St. Clair, the folks uh, from uh, Goodwood Avenue um, properties under construction. And uh, we all also know, and you probably guys, guys know this, Norton Hospital has taken over the Elder Beerman space mm-hmm. uh, for a new radiology diagnostics yep. and specialty outpatient facility. It's going to open in December. It's 30,000 square feet that's going to give citizens opportunities to receive care without having to leave a town uh, like they have to do now to go to Lexington and Louisville. Um, there are more new projects in Frankfurt um, than I can remember ever in the last 30 years. And we have to remember that the role of government is to assist businesses like Correct. yours and remove obstacles for growth. We have to get out of our own way. We have to get rid of the bureaucracy. Um, we as a commission have been working um, to refine processes to make it easier and more streamlined to do business. We're also working to make policies and procedures clearly communicated. Um, on the job front, um, many of you uh, remember that I, I'm the one who you know, hammered the fact that we have negative growth in Frankfurt. Right. Um, uh, we did a remote work pilot program uh, a couple summers ago, and we're just getting ready to start a certified and That pro- turned out pretty well. It turned out very well. What I've been told. Um, you know, uh, Ankur Kapal and, and the group uh, that... Uh, worked with us at Interapp, uh, did an amazing job. Um, uh, we're getting ready to start a, a certified apprenticeship program with the Department of Labor, which will train Frankfurt residents on information technology and cybersecurity and place them in one-year apprenticeships from a path uh, for continued employment. It's a remote work for uh, people to work from their homes and computer-oriented jobs, so it's a perfect program for people who enjoy flexibility uh, and also to work independently and they're motivated to it's work independently. It's called gig work, right? That's correct. This program is funded by a grant by KCDC, um, received the, um, from Congressman Barr's office originally before there was the transition, and was an instrumental in helping provide that. The city partnered with KCDC to write the Department of Labor grant. The program rolls out later this summer and fall, and so you're going to be hearing a lot about that. It's for people with a uh, college, um, excuse me, without a college degree, interested uh, to get trained and have a proclivity to work independently on the computer. It's really targeted to people working in service jobs who want to upscale uh, with the training. Kentucky State University is a partner, and all of the participants, of which there will be 24, will receive 12 hours of college credit through Kentucky State University. The application process is, is very rigorous, and it is conducted by a company called General Assembly, um, who is a leader of information technology, not our General Assembly, but right. an actual company. General Assembly. Um, the remote work program is really targeted to people um, to uh, to earn a stipend while being trained and get a college and get college credit. Uh, then go to work as a junior developer apprentice making about $50,000 a year plus benefits. Um, these are folks who would never have those opportunities to begin with, and we're trying to give this to 24 citizens. Now, just 24 citizens. Those 24 citizens, if they make $50,000 plus, they're going to be buying homes, buying cars, 
paying taxes. They're going to be yeah, one point two million dollar payroll. All of a, all of a sudden, things start changing, mm-hmm. right? Um, on the park side, our Capital City Museum and historic uh, sites is holding a summer day camp. Yeah, I think you, you got have that, some, Eric. some pictures there uh, at Fort Hill, which has been very popular the last couple of years. Um, and um, should be a mountain biking area. It, it, I do not disagree with you, although I think Commissioner Tippett would come after me if I ever went that route. Yeah, he will uh, come after you. Yeah, he will. Um, Say so which one was you wouldn't uh, The next one, uh, I think. Uh, next one. Sorry, that one right here. Those are the new dates for the half-day camp on Fort Hill, the 18th, 19th, and 26th. Um, and uh, we also are going to have, this fall, we're going to have uh, the Fort Hill as a family-friendly Halloween event. That was the previous slide there. Um that one right there, um, and that is that the road going up to Fort it Hill. Is, it is, and uh, it it's going to be a pretty neat little thing that they have going on. Uh, the, but it's going to be family friendly. It's going to be safe for everyone to be there. Do you know what attendance was last year? Um, it was actually very good. It, it was uh, in, in the in the hundreds of people that actually showed up. Do they get? Um, is it locals or out of state? All locals. Because I've always wondered. Um, we live in the capital city. We got these neat places like Fort Hill. Mm-hmm. How many locals actually visit those? Visit the Capitol? You'd be surprised how many people I've talked to didn't even know Fort Hill existed. Right. And what about right. how many go to the Capitol building itself? Because mm-hmm. the more you get people out, the more money they're going to spend at different businesses and, and in you, town. And you know, we have the walking tour in downtown now. For, right. So for people who don't know the history of Frankfurt but have a Friday night and it's nice outside, go on the walking tour. Pop in your AirPods. Stop at a restaurant st- and have dinner. Ha- stop at a restaurant and have dinner, and then do the walking tour, and it'll tell you all about Frankfurt as you you're just bebopping through town. Mm-hmm. Um, this fall, um, um, I'm sorry, July 16th. 14th. 14th. Uh, well, Friday. yeah, we'll talk about this one first. Oh, okay. July, July 14th is going to be at State Stadium. We're going to have uh, a free movie in the park. There's going to be all sorts of you know, food trucks and. Uh, fun games for everyone. And um, tell them where State Stadium is at. Uh, so State Stadium is directly behind the old State Office building. Off High um, Street. Off, off High Street or off Holmes Street if you mm-hmm. come off um, the other side. Um, and it's back in the corner. And um, for anyone who can remember that far back, uh, the uh, main, the side walls of State Stadium are the... State Penitentiary. They're the State former. Penitentiary walls. Um, and so um, it's all the way back in the corner. There's plenty of parking in the state office building parking and it's lot. It's a beautiful field. It is a beautiful field. And in, in fact, I played my uh, little league there. It, it's a historic field. It's yeah. one. Of, it's one of the oldest little league fields in, in for the uh, guy that state. his name is Paul Weddle Stadium. Now mm-hmm. right? he was my little league coach. And uh, so they're going to have Angels in the outfield that's mm-hmm. going to be played, um, and that should be uh, great. July 16th marks the 250th anniversary of the Hancock Taylor and Hancock Lee and Robert McAfee survey, which founded Frankfurt and the Capital City Museum is organizing a That's commemoration Sunday. ceremony. It is, which will take place at 1.30 p.m. on Sunday, July 16th at the First Christian Church on Ann Street. Speakers are going to include Richard Taylor, who is award-winning Richard Taylor. Mm-hmm. We'll talk about the founding of the town on the banks of the Kentucky River, um, how we got our name uh, from Frank's Ford. Frank's Fjord. Is it Fjord um, or Ford? Well, it would be Fjord. We, we in th- Sweden? Well, that w- we all didn't come here talking like us the way we do now. They, they all, well, I came from Harlem. So. I know you did. So, um, there's going to be a symposium that day before Saturday, uh, July 15th from 1 to 4 in the afternoon at the Paul Sawyer Public Library. Um, they're going to have national and regional speakers uh, to speak about the founding of the city. Our Parks Master Plan Implementation Committee includes many of the members of the community. Um, prioritizing improvements all through the parks master plan. Um, these include items like additional walking trails, dog parks, canoe and kayak launches, and access to the river. A group of uh, committed citizens have been working to clear invasive species along the banks, and our bank and our public works and par- uh, parks department have been working on bank stabilization projects. Um, this is not going to be an easy um, like win. Riverview Park. It's it's going to require some significant assistance with the federal government, and uh, we are working on that as, as we speak to make that happen. Uh, most people have heard that the city received a large increase in the amount of money it received from the state of Kentucky as, as the payment in lieu um, for all the state buildings and the public works we provide. It enabled us to increase wages in public fire, public works, and sewer to be more competitive with neighboring cities. All of those are on the agenda tomorrow night. You can watch that live. So the city commission meeting tomorrow night. Tomorrow night. Five o'clock. Five o'clock. Facebook. And uh, 
the uh, the other thing that um, this is something our commission staff have worked hard on in the past for the last three years, um, and and that that pilot really changed a lot of things. So um, I, I understand that a lot of folks say, you know, I watch city commission meeting. It seems like they talk about this and they talk about that, but I don't I don't see what's what's really happening. And um, you know, the reality of the situation is, you know, there's a lot more going on than uh, y- you probably know. Um, well, that's where Eric was talking about the transparency yep. earlier. Yep. Um, there's a lot of complaints that could be ended. Very much so. If um, some information was put out that at least progress is being made. Well, and I think you're, I think you're saying that um, individuals like myself, I am, I'm forcing us to have votes on things. You know, a lot of times people would just go, we're not even going to talk about that. We're not even going right. to the agenda. L- let's, let's have the commissioners, let's have people vote. Let's see where they stand on things. And surprisingly, sometimes, you know, votes change and things happen when you, you know, put it on, or, on TV. Or, or like, you know, one, once a month, a commissioner do a live, you know, in, in official capacity as city hall that says, here's what we've talked about this month. Here's what we've covered. Like just like you just went down through dozens of items that, that the city commission has been working on that I'm most sure that most of that. it, most people had no clue were even Think going on. Right. Yep. So why not? Maybe you just come here. Maybe we'll provide somebody a platform to do that. Well, and that's kind of what our idea is. I guarantee you there's never, at least I don't know, and I try to pay attention. There's not been this much open conversation about these topics. No. Ever. No. And, and, well, and, and that's and what we want to do with this podcast is get officials like you and others that, that, that many have committed to us already if they'd come to discuss, to ask questions that people don't generally get an opportunity to ask somebody in a yeah. position. They're not going to have that the hair that I do and the well, what do you call but, but they I've also, some, but, but they also <laughs> won't. We'll see. But, I mean, you're, and you're, but you're correct. But they will also won't be here for two hours and fifteen minutes. And, no, and, but Jen doesn't have to deal with me. And, for two and hours ha- and you know, half the people but drop this off. Is, this has been a great discussion. It we has. haven't even another one of my. And there's two or three things that we could talk about. Which we, yeah, we we, we ought to. We wrap up here. Uh, Boy, uh, yeah. really, really hate that we didn't get to that one, guys. Well, great. But, but we can do no, that. No, but we need to, we need we to talk do about that next time. We do. We need to talk about the YMCA. We need to talk about the KSU. We well, need KSU to talk about is a, is an economic some economic engine. development. Yep. I've heard they're going to, they're expecting around 1,200 students. I was hoping for 1,400. Um, but, you know, one quick thing is we've got all these open buildings in town. I've had some. KSU student athletes that have worked for me that have mm-hmm. wanted to open a business in town, yep. and they found the pro and they come from money, mm-hmm. and they found the process so onerous mm-hmm. that they went back to Alfreda, Georgia, wouldn't and El Cajon, California. Wouldn't it be great if we had an incubator service or incubator uh, location here that would yeah, allow people to start? I mean, do we do anything with the KSU students? To encourage them to open a business from their degree in Frankfurt, do we make it easy for them to open a business? We don't make it easy for people who live in Frankfurt, period, to open up a business. Took me six months to get a business license. Uh, yeah, yeah, and try literally. to literally. How long to put a sign on your building? Oh, until I just put it out there. Right. You know, though, th- that's a resource. KSU is a resource that those students um, they could be an, another economic engine. Because yep. there's 1,200 students here nine months a year. Yep. And they do go out and spend money. But they don't spend it in Frankfurt. No, they do not. Because I ask the ones that work for me, where do they go for their entertainment? And it's Lexington Center Louisville. There, Craig, I promise you before your last breath, you're going to see some world-class entertainment in this town. And the idea... <laughs> The idea that Corbin, Corbin and Pikeville. can have Chris Stapleton right. and Tyler Childers yep. at the Corbin Arena, and we don't even have an arena, exactly, is deplorable. So you have my word that if I have anything to do with it, you hear that public, Kyle Thompson. There will be a location in this community where you will see world class entertainment. World class, awesome. and and I'm excited about that. Now, Eric, before you cut me off, 
You told me you give me two minutes. Okay, two Rock minutes. And roll. Let's talk sports. All right, we're gonna talk sports. All right. I, I, I'm I'm watching. It's two seventeen. Okay, okay. two seventeen. Watch all you want. All right. So I I'll promise. Give you five. I, I promise. I'll give you five. I promise, David. Will you uh, lend me your your yeah, time, yes. Senator? Yes. Um. So I promised David Sturm that I would talk about the Reds. I know David. All right. Yeah. So listen. Yeah. So uh, you cut me off. He did though. cut you I off did right cut there. You off. Yeah. You do that? Hater so, buttoned you. So listen, I I have I am a long-standing Detroit Tigers fan, right? Sorry. I said I mean it's like being a Cubs fan. Mm-hmm. You know, you have a couple decent years and then you stink for the rest One of the Hall of Famer. And then you and, and then you turn around and the, our nearest team are the Reds, right? And the Reds have not been fun to watch for for a few years. Even when they're good, we didn't like them, for right? About 50 yeah. Yeah. 1990, and then you and then that. you turn around, and they've been in the playoffs twice yeah. so since then. Pete, so Pete Rose, Johnny Bench here. Yeah. So so let's that's a, that's so easy. let's talk about what has happened since June 6th of 2023. Talk about that young man that's faster so, than the wind. So they called up a kid, and my buddies. I'm in a group text with some of uh, my uh, uh, fraternity brothers. Uh, they're probably watching, so they can make fun of me, uh, Troutman, and and those guys. But listen, they tell me they're they're calling up Ellie. They're calling up Ellie, and I'm like, who's El- who is Ellie? We're mm-hmm. not, you know, the Reds are, are playing a girl now. What what's going on? Is he a, is she a pitcher? What what are we doing? De La Cruz. And that's right. Ellie De La Cruz is a Dominican professional baseball infielder for the Cincinnati Reds. How tall is he? About six Major four. About six five. Six five. Okay. Um, he was born January 11th, 2002. He is 21 years old and five months. He was born in Sabana Grande de Boya, Dominica Republic. Um, on July 2nd, 2018, De La Cruz signed with the Cincinnati Reds as an international free agent. He was 16 years old at the time. He received a $65,000 signing bonus. Which made him rich. Which made him country. eight times higher than the median uh, wage. Made his professional debut in 2019 with the Dominican Summer League at the age of 19, hitting 285 in 43 games. Played zero games in 2020 because of COVID. 2021, De La Cruz played for the rookie-level Arizona Complex uh, League Reds. So that's the, below Class A. Below Class A. Uh, Single-A Daytona Tortugas, uh, playing in 61 games and batting a cumulative 296 with eight home runs, 42 runs batted in, and 10 stolen bases. That's it. In 2022, he played for the High A Dayton Dragons. You pass it as you're going up by 75. Right. And the Double-A Chattanooga Lookouts. In 121 games, this kid hit 300, 304 with a career high of 28 home runs, 86 RBIs, and 46 stolen ba- 47 stolen bases. Still on the lat side of stolen bases. Still a little bit, but you have to remember, last year the stolen base champion only had 41. Mm-hmm. He was chosen to represent the Reds in the All-Star Futures game. On November 15th, 2022, the Reds added De La Cruz to their 40-man roster to protect him from the Rule 5 draft. Um, which, which means another team could, m- another team could have picked him up for basically nothing. Mm-hmm. De La Cruz was optioned to Triple A uh, Louisville Bats to begin the 2023 season. In 38 games, De La Cruz hit 300 with 12 home runs, 36 RBIs, and 11 stolen bases in 38 games. On June 6, on the morning of June 6, 2023, he was called up. Actually, he was called up the night before the fifth. Um, De La Cruz re- was promoted to the major leagues for the first time following an injury. To Nick Senzel. Ever, anybody ever heard of Wally Pip? Do you know who Wally yeah. Pip is? Yeah. All right. And Lou, that game, Lou Gehrig took took his place when he got injured. And then Wally Pip never Wally played Pip again. Wally Pip never played another game. Lou Gehrig went 2,130 games straight. In that That's game, his first at bat. Um, what did he do on his first at first bat? First at bat, uh, they were down 3 nothing uh, to the Dodgers at home. He earned a walk um, to load the bases. Two batters later, while standing on second base, Travis Stevenson hit a single, and Ellie De La Cruz ran in from second. To home for his first career run scored on a single. That's not the impressive part. It mm-hmm. took him 7.28 seconds to get from second base to home. He nearly caught McLean, who was trying to score from third. He was moving at more than 30 feet per second. That's a sub 10 second 100 yard dash. At his next at bat, at that's six foot five. At six foot five. Bottom. I think he weighs about 180 pounds. Bottom of the third inning, he gets his first hit, a double. Not the impressive part. The exit velocity off of his bat was 112 miles per hour. It's the first hit. The average exit velocity. Eric has no clue. Yeah, the average exit velocity, that is how hard the ball comes off your bat in the major leagues this year, is right at 88.4 mm-hmm. miles per hour. He was 20 miles faster. Well, than I, I was trying to relate it to the speed of the pitch. Yeah, 
Well, so, so it, 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 it is. You, you lose energy from the speed of the pitch when it hits the bat. All right, physical. So, so yeah, but he's actually gaining it. Yeah, because he's his right. His the bat fulcrum speed so swing, quick. Yeah. It, which reminds people of Eric Davis. It mm-hmm. reminds people of King Griffey Jr. King Griffey Jr. is what I was going to um, say. Again, he sprinted in wait for it, five point nine seconds to second base. That's five point nine seconds. That's one hundred eighty feet. That's five point nine seconds in a sixty yard sprint. That would that would be the the record this year mm-hmm. uh, for the United States. Also making two turns right on June seventh in the bottom of the first. He's actually running more. Yeah. Than 60 so what does that equate to in a forty yard? Uh, it would be faster than anybody runs. See, he's at not the, running in a straight line. He's at, running in a, a it, bowl. I yeah. understand. But I mean, it's it's th- probably three point six. Three point six. But oh, he's fast. He is yeah. unbelievably fast. So um, on June seventh, in the bottom of the first inning, trailing two nothing, Ellie De La Cruz hits his first major league home run against Noah Syndergaard, an eight year veteran, former All Star for the Mets, where he got the nickname Thor. He won the only game for the Mets in the 2015 World Series against the Royals. Syndergaard is on a one year, thirteen million dollar contract with the Dodgers. Not the impressive part. The impressive part was he hit the ball 458 feet. An absolute blast with exit velocity of 114.8 miles per hour. That's a long home run any day of the week. It was t- it was two uh, stadium rows from going outside of American a Great American Ballpark. Um, his That's highest the Reds play. his highest exit velocity would come in at 116.6 for the season in his first month of playing. Uh, to put that in perspective, only nine guys in the majors have hit a ball harder than that, um, and. All of those are big sluggers: Giancarlo Stanton, Aaron Judge, Ronald Acuna, for the Yankees, Vlad Guerrero. Yeah, Acuna's bad. He's On a bad June twelfth, twenty twenty-three, J.T. Real Muto, the catcher for the Phillies and a nine-year major league veteran, hit for the cycle in a game against the Arizona Diamondbacks. Now, for those of you who don't know, the cycle—it's where you hit a single, double, triple, and a homer in the same game—is one of the rarest and most difficult feats in all of baseball. It has only happened three hundred and forty-three times in one hundred and forty-one years. To put that in perspective, there have only been 320 no-hitters in 144 years. Only six guys have ever done it three times, and only 44 players have ever done it twice. Just 12 days later, in a game against the Atlanta Braves on June 23, 2023, perhaps one of the most exciting series of the entire season so far, Ellie De La Cruz hit for the cycle, becoming the youngest player to do so since 1972 and the first Cincinnati Red to accomplish the feat since Eric Davis did it, 34 years and 10 days prior to this amazing act. Only eight Reds players have ever hit for the cycle. He was the fourth youngest player to hit for the cycle and only the sixth player before the age of age 22 to manage the feat. On July 8th, 2023, he became the first Reds player since 1919. 104 years. Yeah, this is very, very significant because you don't see this. He's He's on first base. He steals second. He then steals third, and then he steals home. He stole every base um, once he got on there. Um, in 31 games in his Major League it Baseball, was not close in it was not close at all in any, in any of them. In 31 games in his Major League Baseball career, today was his 31st game. Ellie De La Cruz has 126 at-bats. He has 41 hits, 28 runs scored, 4 home runs, 16 RBIs, 16 stolen bases, only being thrown out twice, nine doubles, two triples, eight walks, and a batting average of 325, on base percentage of 363, and OPS of 887. Now, if you extrapolate that, because I'm a nerd, over a full season, that would equal more than 205 hits. 200 hits is the line of a great hitter in a season. Uh, Ichiro did it 10 seasons in a row. Nobody will ever break that record. Um, 140 runs scored. 80 RBIs, 20 home runs, 80 stolen bases. Last year, the stolen base champion had 41. 45 doubles, 10 triples. Uh, he's he's going to lead the world in triples. Too. Yeah, pl- he played 19 games at third base and 12 games at shortstop. At third, he has a perfect fielding percentage. And at shortstop, he has a 976 fielding percentage with one error. Uh, more importantly, since June 6, the Reds are 23 and 8. Um, and in the first place in the Central Division at 50 wins and 41 losses. Before June 6th. Also, we're at the All-Star break now, right? We're getting close. We're game. now. This it's is either it. one game or this is it, yeah. They were, before June 6th, they were 27 and 33. And in third place, before De La Cruz joined the big leagues, um, quite um, honestly, this kid has broken all the rules. He's a freak. He's a phenom. I'm here for it. Is he the rookie of the year? Probably. 
Um, MVP, probably not out of the question. What, what place are the Reds now? They are in first place. Yeah. Uh, and he is making a whopping sum of $720,000. Now, before we start getting, that's ridiculous. That is the rookie minimum. Uh, and this kid had never played a game until exactly a month ago in the majors. And it's only 50 games. And the average median income in the Dominican Republic is $8,100 right. per capita. So he is one of the wealthiest people in the and world, he and he's very grateful. And you want to know the scariest fact of all? What's that? All the stuff that I've told you, he has a twin brother named Pedro. Oh, that's sweet. Does he play ball? I bet you he does now. Yeah. And so <laughs> he's the second most exciting player in Major League Baseball and possibly the first between him and Otani at oh. the Angels, who's going to be the first half a billion dollar or greater salary he in had the, the history of sports. He had the lowest ERA and the most home runs in the same year. Yeah, he's first place in every that's, category. That's ridiculous. And yet the Angels stink. They have Mike Trout as the greatest player, and they have the, o- Otani, who is the second uh, best player, Babe Ruth and they number. can't win a game to save their lives. And now, we have bored Eric to death with all of his, this. Well, but the interesting thing, his yeah. contract. I'm, I'm trying to him. figure out how this helps the citizens of Frankfurt. It doesn't. This is just sports nerd but, stuff. But listen. But he, Otani's contract, he will certainly get more than $500 million in a season. And I remember when Pete Rose was the first million-dollar-a-year player, and everybody freaked out, said that's too much money. Otani's going to make over $500 million over probably a six-year contract. The the first person to um, be offered $100,000 was Joe DiMaggio, and he turned it down because he said that was too much money. And and baseball money, just for everybody out there, is guaranteed money. So to my daughter, who's 18 and going to uh, the University of Louisville, we are looking at left-handed pitchers, guaranteed money. That's what uh, it's you need to focus contract. on. Now, yeah. His daughter's going to Louisville. My ask, other daughter goes to UK. Ask Kyle what he did for twenty years. That just for thirty some, some foot thirty years for some football team in Lexington. I can't remember what it is. I I work for the uh, sports video department for the University of Kentucky, and and still Kentucky, at times asking to. My my oldest daughter went to UK. My young my middle daughter, in an effort to do anything to uh, crush her father's soul and heart, um, felt that the University of Louisville was the correct place for her to go. Um, I remember seeing that on that, Facebook. That child is the <laughs> love of my life because she is uh, she is me made over. Um, but to answer your question, how does this help the people of Frankfurt? Mm. Those kind of stats, um, I am a stat nerd. When I go into a city meeting, I know every single stat about everything that's going on in all those departments before we get in there. you get them. And if I don't, I'm going to find out what they are. And we, we joke about um, baseball stats and things like that, but... Um, there's a lot of stats when it comes to how you run a, a city. Oh, absolutely. And, and I think that um, it's, for many years, people took this as a, 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 a title, a part-time gig that they could, you know, have, have a little bit of say in things. Um, this group of city commissioners, my fellow city commissioners, they take this seriously. You're getting a lot done. And we are getting a lot done. And when I come back next time and I drop the, the bombs on you all, I can't wait to see your faces. And and really, your wives are going to be happier than anybody. I'll just go ahead and say that right now. So, And if they're happy. They're happy, happy wife, happy life, That's right? That's right. Okay. Take <laughs> us out, Eric. All right. Well, Kyle, in all seriousness, uh, it's not a secret. I'm not a big sports fan. Um, <laughs> Uh, I do like the Dallas Cowboys. So your your bad story about the Detroit Lions, I don't want to hear. <laughs> I haven't smelled a Super Bowl in over twenty years, so um, you know. But Detroit it is what it, it is. I'm uh, a Lions fan too. So how does that make? Does that add anything to it? <laughs> it might even it out a little yeah, bit. Okay. Bear Sanders. But uh, I do appreciate you you taking the time out oh, to, thank to you, come Lord. by and and give it's us been an honor. Uh, a lot of detail, um, a lot of things that I think you know. The citizens of Frankfurt don't get to hear um, that maybe you know maybe we can get some kind of form either here or maybe the maybe the commission could look at working with City Hall and just having a thirty minute weekly update yep. or monthly update. That's great. Idea. Say here is a here is a list of things that we've done because on the yeah. outside, if you're only looking at the agenda items that you that you do, it doesn't it doesn't take into account for a lot of the things that you do behind the scenes. Or just brag about the little stuff. 
Yeah. Those yeah, little right. victories. Because people think like, the city doesn't do anything. We cleaned the intersection at Spaghetti Junction. Yeah, there are no weeds. They don't think you do anything. So when y'all do stuff that people ask me to try to follow up on, right? I broadcast it far right. and wide. Because, and we appreciate that, Because it's, a, our small, it's a small victory that, it, you know, those little things add up well, over the, a period of the time. Thing, the thing to think about on the little victories is if you're always – a lot of people won't measure the victory. It's a victory. It's a mm-hmm. win. It's it's an accomplishment. Absolutely it's something right. done. But people do recognize the big ones. And when you only hear of a couple of big things a year, mm-hmm. it's, all, it's almost like it's political capital. It's oh. like and, you know, and we always I, announce them right in October. Yes. Right? <laughs> what what yeah. can I, what can I attach my name to that will draw me votes? Uh, so you constantly put out that stuff and. I think I think the value of, of the even the big stuff is more at that point. Well, I, I think you guys um, and the, and the citizens of Frankfurt. Uh, first of all, thank you guys for giving uh, me and this commission the opportunity to come and talk, but also to to vote us in and give us a chance. We're, we're the youngest commission probably in a very long time. Um, every person on the commission has school age children. That's that's a big deal, um, and so uh, we're worried about you know, the kids. We're worried about the drug problem and how it's affecting the city. We're worried about what are kids going to do. We want entertainment things for the kids, but we also want jobs for kids and we want we, opportunities. And we need to encourage entrepreneurship. 100%. In this town. Because we've got a lot of empty spaces that landlords want to rent. Right. And they That's might right. work a deal with you to get that face filled because they're not making Ooh. the money as it is. I mean, yeah. But, but yeah, in, in entrepreneur leadership, I think we really need, it's, it's a good thing. I know that if anyone out there contacted any one of the three of us, we would all spend, you know, uh, spend time with people. One hundred percent to to help with the entrepreneurial spirit. I will tell you from personal experience, if it is in your, if something is burning in your heart to do that, you want to start a business, it will never leave your body until you do it. And take all that, and all three of us have had that moment where that. Oh crap! Moment. What have I done? I quit a six-figure-a-year job yep. with a child in college. Yes, he did. Yep. And started a business in 2018 with a friend of mine. Yep. And I put a loan up on my house. Yep. To start Da Vinci's Pizza. Yep. Scott, yeah. Scott, so that that. Know, and all of us can agree that without our significant others uh, supporting us no. and, and if trusting us, my wife didn't support it. I, I, right. I mean, she was, you know, the major breadwinner. Yeah, by by a lot, you know, and if you ever have that burning in your soul, people, it won't leave. No, uh, make it happen. Is, it's nothing more fun. It's what America was built on. Yeah, yep. That's what Frankfurt lives on. That's small right. businesses. Small that's business. Right. That's yeah. what the world lives on. It does. And that's where you know, you know, all of us we support small businesses. You know, we don't just talk the talk. Shop local. Shop local. Shop local. We local. eat local. Uh, you know, we all need to do that. And embrace that small business. And who knew a one-hour podcast would turn into with two and a half hours? Kyle Thompson would turn into every two and person and a half hours. that knew I was going to be on here knew every, it was going to be that long. Yeah, every single person. Every so, person. So uh, share the heck out of this because we're going to do more of this. Watch it in segments. You know, <laughs> yeah. watch the first hour. Watch come it, back. Yeah, watch in segments. But there's a lot. Break of it up good, in five five segments. You can watch here it all week long. And uh, um, we're going to do more of these, and yeah. you know, bring the questions that. You know, we see, we hear about it, our business. We hear about on the phone, people just wondering. And try to get those questions answered versus just letting it sit out there and yep. fester and get worse yep. and worse yep. and worse. Ask the people who've been there. Yeah. Anyway, everybody, thanks for tuning in and watching. Hope you made it this far. And uh, if not, watch us later. Keep, keep watching. On YouTube and Facebook. I right. will have it up on YouTube tomorrow. That is correct. Thank you all for having me. All right. Thanks, Kyle. See ya.